the dolphin bites off the head of a fish and starts f***ing the fish's body like it's a flashlight. See, that's what I'm into. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I will be 230 pounds by the time I hit Raleigh, North Carolina for the Tops Off World Tour September 14th, then Charlotte, Atlanta, Greenville. Next week, Evansville, Kansas City, Wichita, Dallas, Houston, Fresno, San Jose, Anaheim, San Diego, Morrison, Vale, Hollywood, Jacksonville, Mobile, Abbotsford, Seattle, Portland, Milwaukee, Cincinnati, Nashville, Little Rock, Springfield, Philadelphia, Norfolk, Winston-Salem, Fairfax, Roanoke, Rochester, Worcester, Newark, Providence, and Albany, December 10th. Enjoy the episode. So we were told that you might not be drinking for a little while. It's but, 24 hours. Well, I wanted to bring something and do something to be able to add to your bar because they had a full bar here. Oh, wow. We saw that. Some sketchy liquor store, but they had, they had this. <laughs> looking beautiful. They had this gorgeous Jaguar of tequila. Oh, that's gorgeous. I'm going to love that. Oh, so, yeah, that's beautiful. I may, I'll drink if you're drinking. Yeah. If you're drinking, I'll drink. Yeah, that was what we were hoping for. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, do it. Okay. Let's drink the Jaguar. Beautiful. Is it any good? I don't know, but it was four hundred dollars. Looks pretty nice. Oh fuck yes! Grab <laughs> <laughs> a seat right there. Grab okay. a seat right there. All right, here, let me drop off. Should we put ice on it? Probably get some little rocks with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll do it. Funny, I don't know how to pour a jaguar. <laughs> yeah, I, I would think it would come out the mouth, but it looks like maybe it's the top. It, I would pour it out the mouth or the or the ass. <laughs> but this, the, where a whale would breathe is an interesting choice. Yeah. Thanks. Amen. Right here, here, grab a seat right, right there. there. Yeah. yeah. Um. um and if you're, do you live out here? Yes. Do you, I live. For real? Maybe eight minutes away. Wow. The house that I just got. Holy shit. Yeah, uh, she's going to get rocks, then we'll pour a glass, also a glass of Jaguar. Beautiful. But yeah, How? dude, we're, we're neighbors. So my, my boy Hayden was here the other day with the bikes. Oh, we're, yeah. The bike fellas. Yeah. Good friend of mine. Good friend of mine. He, he came straight from my place. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, those bikes are dangerous. Oh, yeah, they're crazy. They're fucking, they're really crazy. They're like electric ones? You have the yeah. fucking greatest hair I've yeah. ever seen in my entire my hair? life. Thank I'm you, so brother. jealous. Yeah, yeah. You, you talking about, I'm supposed to be checking you. One banana. Yeah, you just. Two. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, that, I used to have hair like that. Yeah? Yeah, when I was young. What color? Uh, brown. It, was, it was brown. It was actually a perfect shade of brown, and then I started dyeing it, and I fucking lost it. I, yeah, I've never dyed my hair. I've, like, thought about I don't really know what I would dye it. Just like a different. You don't need to. It's yeah. perfect. Thank you. I don't. I do, so you're from Wisconsin, right? Or no? You went to school in Madison. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a great story about Madison. So the we're, going, we're going now. We're rolling. We're rolling. Beautiful. So the Wisconsin Dells is like a place where all the parks are. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah, so they they have this. The head of tourism in Wisconsin is this redheaded woman, very fucking hot. I've never been in redhead chicks, right? Never my whole life, never. They lock me into a ride, and she leans over to tell me something. The head of tourism. And, yeah, head Let's of tourism. That's hot when they have a, you know, a title. A head of tourism, and she's, uh, like, at the time, I'm 36. She's, like, 40, right? She's a little older than me. She's well, a little bit of a MILF. My, my, <laughs> your sweet size. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get into my redhead story. And she leans over. And I see she's not wearing a bra. And I am like, holy fucking shit. All of a sudden, I got to think for redheads now. Like, instantaneously, I'm like, wow. So, cut to two years ago, I'm at Madison, Wisconsin, at the, the comedy club there. Comedy State. That's, I got kicked out. That was my first ever comedy show, and I got kicked out. Who are you watching? Uh, yeah, dude, I don't know. Some random local <laughs> people. My friend and I were just drunk, and we somehow got the top table in the very front. And we didn't know, like, the rules. We were, uh, you know, she was, like, chirping us, and we were chirping her back too much. And we, we got, like— Oh, it was a female comic? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> big, big black lady. She was a sweetheart. And she kind of, like— they I kinda, would love like, it if it was Miss Pat. The whole crowd. It wasn't. It wasn't. But she was similar vibes, and they, they all just kind of, like, basically cheered us out of the— oh. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, was it an all-black room? No, 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 oh. no, no. Wait, nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that. We were just being fucking annoying and drunk. Yeah. So, two years ago, I'm at Comedy All State, and we get done this show, and we all go upstairs to the roof to smoke a joint. And my buddy Ari is with me, and he says, "Hey, man, have you ever been into redheads?" And I go, "No, but let me tell you the story. It's funny. We're in Wisconsin, and I tell the whole story, and the kid that we're sitting with, who's like our assistant PA, oh, no. goes." That was my mom. Oh, man. <laughs> and I went, oh, well, your mom's got a great rack. He goes, I know. <laughs> he goes, I know. <laughs> so cheers. Oh, God, I so if you that, do have man. redhead kids, how do we open this, do you think? Um, that's a good question. 
Yeah, if I have redheaded that kids, hopefully it. it's a girl. Oh no, that's it. Yeah, there you go. Although fucking redheaded dudes, Carson Palmer's a badass dude. There's definitely oh, there's, there's, there's baller ones. Red, too. I would argue redheaded dudes are better athletes sometimes. Are they? I think I so. Like, I guess I haven't paid enough attention. I, I like the Andrew Santino is Andrew Santino's that, redhead. Right? That's the redhead co- comedian that hangs out with Bobby Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's funny. He's so, a great golfer. Yeah, yeah. my uh, my redhead male story was it's the oldest woman I've been with, and I was I was twenty twenty five. She was twenty or she was fifty six. That was cool. Fuck, I've never fucked a fifty six year old. And she had she had her, yeah, four her years daughter. Her daughter. They both do like OnlyFans stuff, and she's trying to get her daughter to come watch it. This is kind of like in dirty real quick but i didn't i didn't do that i, I did hook up with it with the, with the mom but 56 um, 56 yeah that's, that's as old as i've gone so far let me see a knife i need to, i need a knife to open this beat so wait 56 mm-hmm. so wait what is it about milfs that you like so i can tell you what i like but i'm married one mm-hmm. so like I'm married a milf oh uh, well, I'm, well I'm, I'm i uh she's now a milf she wasn't a milf when i met her what's the age difference milf I mean, I think, you, I think you and her. What's your age difference? Two years older. No, two. She's a milf now. I'm fucking a milf. Like, yes, I'm yes. Currently okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I plan to at yeah. some point as well. Uh, yeah, but our age difference is two years. She's two years older than me. I like older chicks. I've always, I think I just always felt young, and so I like someone <laughs> nice. who's going to pay bills and you nice. know that do all the shit that I can't do. Yeah, I don't know. I think I just my earliest, you know, sort of sexual experiences and sort of I don't know things that got me horny when I was way younger ended up for some reason being like milf stuff like the shows i was watching and the few interactions i had in high yeah. school with women were uh not few but the ones that really stood out the core memories were with like older milfs i, I could talk about this for, so when i was like 14 i guess a 26 year old see that's that's crazy because that is like at that time that was like man did, did you have to lie or did she, is she just a freak there we go this poor breed good yeah so this is uh the Jaguar. I didn't read much of the details on it, but I got it up the street at uh it's one of those liquor stores that's just called liquor store. This but, seems like something that uh would be at like a a black bachelorette party. Yeah, like they'd, they'd be like, Yeah, we're going hard tonight. Yeah, <laughs> we got the sure. Jaguar. Yeah, my bachelor party guys. The uh but no, so I was fourteen and we were at the beach. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Thanks for coming and doing this. Yeah. Were you at the Morgan Whalen concert the other day? Yeah, I saw I saw a picture of you there. I was like, it's funny. Once you see, all of a sudden you got on my radar, you're in every fucking picture. You're like everywhere I look. Yeah, well, shit, man. Um, Morgan's a good friend and and Hardy especially. I'm really close. I know Hardy real well. I know him Not and real his well. family I mean, real well. Partied with him for a day. I'm like, like I talked to him. Well, I, I, this he's is been really a, smooth, by the way. It actually is really good. It's really smooth, like disarmingly smooth. So those guys are like almost like the equivalent of me in the country game like the young guys kind of changing up styles a little bit and you know gaining a lot of fans in like the college girl space uh so we've done a lot of stuff together and i've actually been put on a couple shows with hardy now we're doing the georgia rodeo really yeah and um so yeah i've been to a lot of their shows they've been to my shows sometimes i pop out and do a song that's kind of cool i saw uh hardy was uh, Hardy and his, by the way, Hardy's wife. I was with her the whole time. I'm really, it's weird. I'm like really close with him, his wife and her parents. Her, his wife is one hell of a drinking partner. Yeah. She's she amazing. Is a fuck, she is. She, we did the beer Olympics at, uh, with Bustin' with the Boys in Nashville. I don't know what that and is, she, but I want to do it. <laughs> well, I got you an invite for next year. I Amen. can guarantee that. Uh, you play flip cup, you play uh, beer pong, you play everything. And she, fucking murdered it yeah. she was so good and then when she had too much to drink she'd go over to the corner and throw it up and then come back and drink oh again. that's like some shit you do she was a fucking pull, gangster pulling trig yeah yeah that's badass man yeah she's sweet the first time that i met should i tell this to you i'll just say it first time that i met that family it was a hearty um af- after party when he released his album right the crow and the the mockingbird of the crow and we're all at uh my friend's club uh rainbow room as yeah. you i'm sure you're yeah. in the rainbow room but we're all up in the the top little private area it's me hardy machine gun kelly chris D'Elia, all kind of like at this little round table just talking about life and um i decided to go take a piss and i'm in the bathroom <clears throat> and this dude in a cowboy hat walks in and like stands next to me while i'm pissing kind of leans over i don't know if he was just if he actually looked at my dick or if he was just like kind of playing around <laughs> but he's like hey man he's like hey man you got a dope member on you I don't think he said dope because he, yeah. he, he he was yeah white hair he, he was like hey man you got a nice member on you brother and I was like 
I was concerned, and then I looked over, and it's this badass looking dude in a cowboy hat. I was like, "Thanks, man, really appreciate that." So then, so then we like, well, after we wash our hands, we start like bonding a little bit, and like he didn't tell me who he was, but we started bonding. And I was like, "All right." Later in the night, there was like some weirdo, creepy dude like in the the party trying to like I don't know, like hit on girls and in a weird way. So then the the same guy with the cowboy hat comes up to me and he's like, "Hey man, we should probably beat his ass." Like we should, this dude's like thirty years my senior and he's trying to you know throw hands with with some random kid. And then finally, I I'm w- hitting on a, a milf up in this other area. Yeah. And the same guy walks up and he's like, "Hey man, that's my wife." But it, it was we were already boys. It was yeah, like, yeah, "Hey yeah, bro, yeah. you're a dog. That's my wife right there." And I was like, <laughs> "No way, man! Like, how do you guys know Hardy?" They're like, "Oh, we're his we're his uh, parents in law." really so this was callie's mom and dad oh wow and now we're all real tight and i see them whenever we kick it i'm, I'm probably gonna go stay with them in nashville that's crazy yeah that's cool to see that scene be that kind of tight though it's so nice man it's because everyone mm-hmm. seems really you know when i was a kid like if you were a m- music star or whatever you were just unapproachable yeah it's cool to see people that are really chill I and mean, we were in like the green room and it was like, like scotty pippen was there you were at that show what the Morgan Whalen show? Yeah, no. Or you no. just saw picture? No, okay. I just saw okay. a picture online. It was I was it was from Hardy. I think it was from Hardy's feed. Probably. Yeah. Wouldn't doubt it. Wouldn't doubt it. But yeah, we were. Scotty Pippen was back there. Scotty Pippen being just you How know. How much bigger is he than you? Legend. Not not that much. I think it might be an inch taller. Really? I'm I mean I'm tall. Yeah. Uh, and then what? Uh, DJ Paul from Three Six Mafia. A lot of cool people and all the country guys like open for them and work with them are so cool. That's it. When did that happen, do you think? Did that, was that always been in your life that, that like, country and hip-hop's kind of melted together? No, it hasn't. I mean, I didn't really love country growing up. I'm from Minnesota. And, What'd you listen to growing up, hip-hop? Uh, hip-hop, and I, I had, like, a decently long phase of, like, emo, like, rock and, like, punk and shit. I was a skater kid, and in my hometown, it was basically, like, one set of pretty girls, and then the skater kids and the hicks had to kind of fight over them you know really? it was like yeah 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 so i was on the skater side stoner skaters versus like hick hunter boys yeah um so i had like sort of a bad taste how big how big is the town uh 150,000 maybe okay. rochester minnesota okay. Oh, okay oh i know rochester minnesota are they, are they perform there you perform there i think so civic center maybe yeah it's the the mayo mayo clinics there huge yep. hospital yeah all i performed in rochester minnesota yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. my hometown man shit we'll know yeah. next time where my mom out uh <laughs> So anyways, the uh, country wasn't really my thing until much later, maybe the last like five years when I met some friends who who were big fans of country. And I don't know, it just started growing. I mean, I think I heard the right music. I heard like Chris Stapleton, yeah, which is like kind of soul country. Loved that. I heard um, Toby Keith, just, you know, classic. Um, and then I started hearing Hardy, who's my tying it into rock and morgan wallen and i was like there's girls on me every time that i meet them and i like them more and we've done some songs together that we're working on and writing things and it's just you know it's coming together well so i, I think i'm gonna go stay in nashville for a while and just really hook up it's like maybe not a country like project maybe a little ep or something well you know uh it's funny i feel, I feel like country's permeating everything right now because we were at the super bowl list last year and diplo was there and he was like, hey man, I got this new project. I mean, I don't know if I'm telling things out of school. I don't know if what he's released or whatever. It's out. It's like a country project, right? It's good. It's yeah. good. It's really good. <clears throat> and he was talking about it, and I was like, oh, that sounds really cool. And I was, but I grew up in Florida, so like country kind of permeated everything in Florida. Mm-hmm. Like we, we always had. It, we were the same way. We were. You were either like into hip hop or you were into uh, into country. What's that? A nice ring. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Is that from the lightning? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do, uh, I didn't do, I mean, I'd seen the cabin, but I I, I did my, a little bit of research this morning. I saw you're from Tampa. Yeah. Uh, they love me out there. Yeah. And the team uses my song as their victory song. For real. So then, here, let me just show you this thing. So uh, when they won, this is, I think, the 2021. They, yeah, 2020. When they were the champions, they since Gravy Train was their song, they were yeah. putting up billboards and stuff. It's, it says Gravy Train on the bottom of all of them. So all the rings say Gravy Train. I got to party with all them. Oh, shut the Drink fuck out of the Stanley Cup. It's got my real last name on it. 
That's definitely like one of my biggest. That's I, fucking badass. I don't think I've ever worn it in public until today when I found out you're from Tampa. That is really fucking cool. Probably one of the coolest things I I own. Yeah. That's fucking. Does it? Does it? You seem like it, that stuff kind of lands with you. Like when, yeah. like, like when people like give me something, I do a venue and they give me something. Like I always, it means a lot to me because I never had it in life. But it seems like you're still at the place in life where you're like. Like going backstage at the Morgan Wallen concert, and you're like, oh, "This is cool as fuck." This yeah, is so I love fun. it. I love it. And and I obviously have all my shows where I'm backstage, and I have cool people back there and stuff. And it's, you know, I'm just so used to that. But going to see like a completely different genre and yeah. witness the vibes is it's it's awesome. It's fucking great, man. Yeah, man. So I drank out of a Stanley Cup uh, whenever I go back to Tampa. I performed at the arena a few times. Yeah. Um, oh, I bet you sell that out in a fucking second. And oh yeah, and, and and I was uh I mean I was a hockey fan growing up. I played hockey as a kid because I'm from Minnesota. Oh yeah, so so it was cool. And and honestly, was, there's a few sports teams that I kind of have alliances with because they support me in different ways. Who's that? So you uh, got the Lightning. So we got the Lightning on the basketball side of the Timberwolves because I used yeah. to live with Carl Anthony Towns, who plays for them, and yeah. he's a good friend of mine. Um. But outside of that, no Minnesota teams have really reached out to me. So, like, can I talk about the Cubs thing? I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm I'm throwing the first pitch at the Cubs game. Uh, Chicago Cubs versus Atlanta Braves. Did you play baseball so, growing up? No, no. I, <laughs> it's going to be a good first I, pitch. <laughs> I suck. So, I'm going to walk out, and I'm going to learn a little bit about pitching. But, like, I just grabbed a beautiful outfit. Have you seen Eastbound and Down? Yeah. Are you fucking serious? You know La Flama Blanca? The, uh, yeah, the, yeah. The white suit with the silver. Yeah. I, I had someone tailor me a, a custom one. Oh shit! So I'm gonna walk out in that and either throw like a decent pitch, or I'm considering maybe doing like a softball pitch. Is it what? Are, either way, if I could like nail it, like if I did a softball pitch and nailed it, it would be fucking badass. So let me let me tell you, this is uh, this is what my therapist said to me a long time ago. So we were doing a beard con- a weight loss contest, me and my buddy. And what, the loser had to shake, have his beard shaved off, and I was really stressed off because I didn't want to fucking look like an asshole and not have a beard. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's for me. It's been I don't know how long it's been for you. For me, it's been since twenty fourteen, well, so almost ten years. For me, it was uh, probably twenty seventeen when I got my beard shaved off. Is, okay, yeah, continue, sorry. So. Yeah, so no, so I, I I literally was freaking out. My therapist is like, "Let me tell you something." He's like, "You know, I, I think." You're worried about this beard thing, but I think who are they going to Google more if the person that gets his beard shaved off or the guy that shaves the beard off? And I go, what do you mean? He's like, I mean, one of you is going to going to like blow up on the Internet because it was on Rogan's podcast. He's like, one of you is going to blow up on the Internet the next day because everyone's going to Google what does he look like without a beard? I think I'd rather be that guy. And I went, it's a great fucking call. So I had pot roast that night (laughs) for the weight loss contest, went in fat as fuck. And I fucking ended up losing. I just ate what I wanted to eat. I was like, if Tom's skinnier, then <clears throat> I'll win. Can I like, like, what? Can we, can we get a pick? Oh, yeah. Up pull of, the pick up of me with my beard off. It is bad. It. Dude, I want But to what's crazy it. is when you shave your beard off, you look into the mirror and you're like, I haven't seen you in forever. Yeah. It I feel like you look you of, cute and wholesome. I look, this is the center one. That's it? That's me without my beard. Well, okay, but they left the mustache. Well, they they he left the he shit got to shave it so he shaved a mustache on me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Wait. Hold on. Go, go back. Go with, back a little bit. Zoom in a little bit. Is that is the Twitter one right there? You as well. That's no. That's uh. A, an, oh no. That's me. That's me. Yeah. I don't know. I I, I like you with the beard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you look you look pure. You look innocent, but you look like you you. I don't know. Maybe work at a Home Depot. I look or, fucking. Yeah, my yeah. my daughter said you look like a pervert. And I was like, how do, you, how do you know what a pervert looks like? She goes, I'm staring at one right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your daughter must be slick, man. How, yeah. old are you, how old are your kids? 17 and 19. 17 and 19. 17 and 19. How are you, 25? 27. 27? They listen to Young Gravy? Yeah, yeah. I feel like my... That's your, your fucking demo. My demo is like college kids and then... My daughter is my oldest daughter. It was like, uh, she was going to be over here, but she's got tonsillitis. Everyone's sick right now. Everyone's so sick. But brutal. so wait, uh, so what's it like? Do you, you do still do college tours and stuff? a lot really it's like i i basically let me think i've done i've done a ton hundreds of shows that are my own like headline shows with tour buses but uh who do you bring to open for you friends either friends or nobody just go out by yourself well i'll have my dj do a cool set and then i do a long set because i have kind of a cult fan base that that 
you know, I don't want the, like, they'll hate on the opener sometimes. So really? I like, yeah, or like kind of boo or like not give them the energy. So, by the way, the fucking tequila is so fucking dude, slick. It's really, really good. It's really yeah. slick. I need more ice. Yeah. I, this is really slick. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. fucking. Should we pour it one more time? Yeah, pour, pour another one. Okay. Pour another okay. one. So, we do, do you find this? Okay. So, b- bizarre question. Do you find that you write differently th- from when you first started, when you were doing SoundCloud stuff, to now that you know you have a fan base and you kind of know who they, what they look like? Like when you first started, this is how I what I think. Oh, you can just go ahead and pour on Pete. So this is what I, I think. So like when I started doing stand up, I just wanted to be edgy. I wanted every comic in the room to think I was the edgiest, fucking fearless dude. And then and then I write one joke that goes well, and then I go, oh, I guess I'm better at storytelling. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, and I guess people like listening to stories about my family. And then you start almost like not writing for your audience, but you find your voice a little more. Yeah. But it, it's got to be tricky when when you have the most coveted fan base there is, which is yeah, fucking. That's th- it's a really good point. A really good like th- th- something that I think about all the time. Really, um, when I'm making music, when I'm making an album, because there's like I, I think that my biggest songs are not the favorites of the the main fan base. The ones that go huge are like I don't know. They're a little when I try something different. They're a little more like poppy. So. Not pop necessarily because there have been some like gnarly trap ones too, but I think um, whenever I make an album, I I make sure there's a cut on there for everybody, really? and I try to keep a few like of the classic gravy styles on there. And um, what's like a go to like like what's a go to gravyism? Like like where do you, where do you find yourself going? Like fucking I don't know what to do. I'll just slide this. I, I and this will fill. Well, for me, I mean, the songs that end up, I think what I'm kind of known for by at least the general public and not like my harder, more hardcore fans is like sampling something that's a very recognizable song Mm -hmm. and making that into a rap hit. I didn't realize, Um, I didn't realize how, I didn't realize how identifiable the Snoop uh, Doggy, Snoop Doggy, how that sample, I listened to it on the ride over today. It's aggressive. Snoop Doggy Dog. You know, have you ever heard the original song? Uh-uh. Oh, 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 which one? I it's mean, the the original, the one they sampled that from. I don't know who. It literally what. is like, hey, get your dogs out. Oh, you're who- talking about um, oh, what's that song called? It's off. It's off Doggy Style, the album. Um, no, no, yeah, 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 yeah. It's either what's my name or it's uh, what's my motherfucking Snoop Dog. Have you have you worked Snoop. with Snoop yet? No, and I haven't met him, and everyone thinks oh. everyone thinks we should work. It's oh. like. Oh, fuck I, I, I fuck uh fuck and i've collabed with martha stewart on stuff too dude it's like, it's like, i gotta set you up with snoop he I is love to, he man. is the motherfucker and I, dude he's like one of my biggest inspirations Absolutely. hey Pete, can you pour it out of the jaguar for me it's a little tough to pour and talk dude, it's a little <laughs> um no snoop's the motherfucker snoop yeah. is everything you want him to be and then some he is the best he is the best representation you know i get i get obsessed with uh I think you'll understand this coming from like a small town. I'm impressed by celebrity. It's not lost on me. Mm -hmm. And if you do it right, you win me over. When I had a discussion not long ago with some friends who are very tapped into, you know, hip hop and and everything social, I guess. Cheers, Cheers. buddy. To you and Snoop working together. Hell yeah. And to me, and to me, to me, me, uh, introducing you guys. There you go. Um, I think that Snoop Dogg, even if he doesn't have the most, you know, Grammys or streams or anything, I think he might be the most. If someone, the average, if you took a random, or average human being, and you randomized it and got a hundred of them, I think Snoop Dogg. If they asked you who name one rapper, I think he'd be the first. Oh yeah, because there's Tupac, there's Biggie, there's Drake, there's all these people. But I think that the average person, especially if they don't know that much about hip hop, everybody still knows Snoop Dogg. Everyone, he might be one of the most famous people in the world. Yeah. He, you know, he's awesome because he's from fucking Long Beach hood, and, and he's he, the and thing. he's the most regular. Like he, I mean, he. It's funny, you know. I get like I met Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Arnold was like, I worked out with him for a day. Wow! And he was everything you wanted him to be. Like he was that, and Snoop's that. Like Snoop's that. Like he's everything you want him to be. He's always high. He's always Brother. got a. He's always got a blunt. He's always like. 
He's always listening to music. He's, I mean, like when I, the, with the the funny thing about I thought about Snoop, this is gonna sound silly considering who he is, is how much he loves music, like how much he loves music. You know, like you go, you, I know that he's a musician, right? Yeah, but he just listens to music nonstop. What did he listen to? Could you tell? I, I no, I I was I wanted to. I was a little overwhelmed. I was working with him on a show. We were and we were quarantined together. So we were together for like 30 days. Oh wow. And so Hell yeah. Oh. First night, first night I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna fucking get to know the guy because I want to be his friend. Like I wanted to be his friend. I was I've listened to him forever. And uh I was telling a story. You could see him like not believing the story, you know. So sometimes my stories are a little outrageous. Mm-hmm. And he was like, huh? And so then he just FaceTimed someone in the middle of my story and then went over and he goes, You know this guy? And Red Grant was the guy, and Red goes, oh, Fuck yeah, I know Bert. And he's like, The machine. And he goes, All right, he checks out. And he's like, You're good. <laughs> That's funny, man. Right away. Right wow. away, right away. And so he uh and, and then immediately we became friends. And then uh and and then I, I was rapping his songs back to him, but I didn't know the lyrics to his songs. Like I I'd always fucked up the lyrics to his songs. So I didn't know the yeah. nuance of the songs. Yeah, fair. But yeah. Who who's some like who's your because you've worked with some pretty badass dudes? You worked with T Pain, right? T Pain. T Pain's a motherfucker. T Pain is great, great dude. We've picked up, we've hung out a ton of times outside of just music. He's great. I mean, my favorite rappers when I actually started popping off, I wrote out, wrote out a list of my favorite rappers and who I would want to collaborate with. Okay. Because I'm I'm pretty picky about collabs. I don't either cl- only collab with someone that like I think is a perfect fit or someone that I can work with in person and do it together. Like I'd have to be in person. I couldn't just have yeah. you do your I've I've done very few collabs that were like remote. But my list was um I'm gonna be very judgy on this list. Okay. Because I'm list. like I'm like a huge but I'm older than you, so my hip hop list is gonna be older. Okay. So it was Juicy J. Okay. Okay, that that tracks. And we're tight. You now. did work with him. And we're tight now. And we yeah. did work. Lil Wayne. We Dude, worked. I met Lil Wayne when he was like 14. <laughs> Yeah, he's dude, the earliest rapper yeah. or the youngest rapper to ever pop up. Whatever age, whatever age difference we are, I met him then. I was twenty six. I was twenty six. I don't think we're ten years apart or twelve years, but he's much younger than me. He's much younger than all the hot boys. And they were staying on uh at the Grafton on on Sunset Boulevard. I think it's changed the name. Is it the Grafton still? And it changed. And what they know. <clears throat> uh, okay, yeah, because I hadn't heard of Grafton. Oh, shut up. Wow. So, yeah, so, so so I walked out. I walked out, and I saw the Hot Boys, the fucking Hot Boys, all sitting there, 26 okay. years old, and I go, and I fucking geeked out. Birdman there? Uh, no, no. Oh. It, was, it was They were with uh, a female who was there who was, this is how, this is, you're never going to, you might not get this. Back in the day in CDs, they'd put, uh, for, for business purposes, contact Monisha at, you know, and then give a number. And she was the name on the back of the fucking CD. I met her, like, wow. it, it, and she was like, "Oh, give me, I'll give you a number. We can set you up and with them." And I was like, "Yeah." And then she said her name. I said, "Wait, are you on the back of the CD cover?" And she goes, "Yeah." I go, "Wait, I think I have your number. It's in my car." And she goes, "You do." That's, That's how I'll call you. Wow. It was, it was uh, the, all the hot, oh, oh, not all the hot boys. There was one that was missing, but Lil Wayne was there, uh, Juvie and BG, wow. and I geeked out. I geeked yeah, out, and well, I, I, and I, I want to say I was one of the first people to respect Wayne. At that level, because Dude. his on the Hot Boys, the, the Hot Boys collab album, he had a fucking he had a track that was so fucking smooth. I was like, I mean, Lil Wayne has so he's I think he's one of the best lyricists ever. What's and it like? What's he like to work with? Does he come in? So this was during COVID. So we we I Facetimed him. He's mad nice, but but I didn't actually get to work with him. But here's the thing: was when when it was my song. It's the only only remix I've ever done. And I basically had a rule because he was the last person I had to cross off that list I was giving you oh, earlier. We're not talking about the list. I'll just, I'll, I'll just, I'll finish the list before I get into this. Okay. The other ones were it was Lil Baby, Young Dolph, Young um, Dolph, R.I.P. Yeah, R.I.P. And oh, man, yeah, rest in peace. Um, Juicy J, and maybe I named four and I'm missing Lil Wayne. I don't know. There might have been one more. Um, oh, it's someone that I uh, have a song coming out with soon that I can't disclose quite yet. Um, anyways, we cash money signed on the same label as me and I'm close with both of like the 
founders of a label. And I sent them this song. They were trying to get all these people onto the remix that was popping off. It's called Oops. And actually, the plot came today. Uh, I, oh, shit. That's a casual drop. <laughs> yeah, baby. It had, to, it had to happen. I mean, okay, it's been three years. It's been three years since I got a plaque because everything was backed up. Yeah. And I got like eight yesterday. So, so yeah. It's going to feel a, good. It's a good feeling, man. They're all lined up I, in my living room. Um, <laughs> but basically, they, they told me they're like, Wayne very rarely will do a feature. He has to love the song. I'd say it was a 10% chance. This, these are the, the guys that run the label, but so they kind of signed him um and they sent me and like it was like a 10 percent chance he'll do it but if he does it you will get it back immediately and he'll probably do well and i went to bed woke up file in my inbox how great is that feeling Lil wayne went crazy on it and he said he ended his verse with wheezy gravy and oh man it was fire he, he really i love it when like i mean i haven't had that many transactions like that where like you're trying to like kind of get a verse through someone else yeah but if they deliver it's like you know that's a sign of respect how, how fun was it sweet time. did you get out of bed and listen to it to it did you get a cup of coffee or did you just sit in bed and go fucking play no i was at my mom's house and i saw the text come in I was at my mom's house i was at my mom's I house. fucking you know i know i milfs love you you're fucking adorable right now there's a fucking there's a a room full of older women going this guy is so fucking cute <laughs> i was at my mom's house when i got my track from lil wayne <laughs> yeah man i was i went back during covid i went back and i stayed with my mom for like a, a year plus and, yeah and just took a few a few trips out that's actually where i wrote like my second big project um which had the song in it but i yeah i woke up got some coffee with my mom we drank our coffee together and i was like mom like you know i talked about lil wayne a lot i need to play you something and i started playing the song she's like i heard you recording this this is oops i know what it, i know i know i know i was like no just wait and then lil wayne came in and he went crazy it was that was that was one of my best lil wayne's moments. a big skateboarder yeah i saw him at yeah. the x games the other day see i'm not that good at skateboarding he was at the x games yeah god damn it he was yeah. there sunday sunday was when i was gonna go yeah i went sunday I went Sunday with Leanne. We took, I wanted to see Tony uh, skate the uh, vert ramp to the best trick. I was like, you got to see Tony. All that was going on. No one, I didn't get enough details, man. I was supposed to pull up that day. We had a photo shoot with Spin from like 6 a.m. until noon. And then it was an hour to get out to Ventura. It would have taken more to get out to Ventura at that time. And he skated it too. But they did uh, Street. It was right before that. And some girl was saying something about Lil Wayne. It was funny. I walked up the thing and there were cops like, like mad dogging us at the top of the thing and i was like that's odd i was like hey we're cool like i'm like i don't know it's just odd and then this girl said something about lil wayne and i was like yeah yeah lil wayne sure she was like what if he like knows you and i was like lil wayne doesn't know who the fuck i am and she was like well i don't know i mean you guys and then she kept bringing him up and then this girl and standing in front of me and then i looked over because i was trying to see this kid do a trick and it was fucking lil wayne and i was like Oh, he's he doing here. the trick or no, he, he, was, he, okay. was just, he was sitting front row. He had the best seat in the fucking house. He had the best seat in the fucking house. Front row, and the cops were protecting him. So I walked by the cops second time. I go, You're protecting Lil Wayne. And they went, No shit. I was like, but he uh he's I I think he's fucking awesome. I yeah. think he's fucking awesome. I mean, he also his like real peak was during my like middle school, high school era, which I yeah. I, I believe that what you listen to during middle school and high school kind of becomes your favorite music for life. Buying tickets to your favorite event should not be stressful. Game time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets to all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guaranteed. You can stop stressing over the ticket and start getting hyped for all the fun you're going to have. That's the best part of concert tickets. The best part of concert tickets is buying them I, in my opinion i buy them all and then i reach out with who i want to go to i pick my night i plan my night out and you can too and you can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football basketball baseball comedy concerts theater and more get images of your seat before you buy which is imperative these days because you'll know exactly what you're expecting when you arrive buy tickets in a matter of seconds two taps and you're all set we did this for we did this for Metallica. I will be doing it for Snoop a Doggy Dog and Dave Matthews is in Irvine tonight. Leanne and I are snagging tickets. Snagging tickets. 
without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code BIRDCAST for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account, redeem your code BIRDCAST for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. We are supported by Shopify. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Whether you're a garage entrepreneur or IPO ready, Shopify is the only tool you will need to start, run, and grow your business without the struggle. Shopify puts you in control of every sales channel. So whether you're selling satin sheets from Shopify's in-person POS system or offering organic olive oils on Shopify's all-in-one e-commerce platform, you are covered. And once you've reached your audience, Shopify has the internet's best converting checkout to help you turn them from browsers to buyers. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. and Shopify is truly a global force powering all birds, Rothy's and Brooklinen and millions of other entrepreneurs every size across the country, over 170 countries included. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. This is possibility powered by Shopify. We are hardcore supporters of Shopify. I'm telling you right now, our family is a Shopify family. Sign up. That's our business. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash BurtCast. All lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash BurtCast. Take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash BurtCast. Oh, okay. So then I'm hip hop and like all like the Smiths, the cure. Yeah. Like I'm Dude, really- I had a whole conversation recently with some people. I, I mean, I, I, was, I always mix those two up and I was like, man, the Smiths and the cure, the lead singer of the cure has the S- Smith as a last name. And I was like doing all this yeah. math and it's like, I was like, they must have beef. And then I kind of got into like the wormhole of like, the Oh, there's there. their whole Susie and the Banshees. That whole era defines like eighth and ninth grade to me because i was trying to get chicks but the music i was into wasn't chick friendly which was uh fucking i'm trying to think in eighth grade i'm guessing it was probably uh i'm trying to i just did a a timeline of my hip-hop and i was doing it with uh with nori and 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 i said mantronics was like the first thing i started listening to and he was like i did not expect that to come out of your mouth i want to i want to see your timeline my my, it's so funny i just did it my first my first uh hip-hop introduction was uh roxanne shante roxanne roxanne i'm gonna be your man i'm gonna make it hotter than it is in granada the r-o-x-a-n-n-e roxanne is who i be and so roxanne shante was was a 13 year old girl battling these dudes from from i think queensbridge and and so she was 13. There's a movie about it. It's not that great, but there's a movie about it. And she was doing Sway's morning show at Sirius XM one time. And I saw Roxanne Chante and I lost my fucking mind. We're the same age. She's been in hip hop for fucking 55 years. And I just fucking, lo- I took my shirt off, pressed my tits on the window. She's been in hip hop for 55 no, years. No, not 55 years. But, it's but like how? Yeah, hip hop hip- hip- isn't 55 years old. But she's been in hip hop as long as. She's been 13, and I think we're the same age. And so, and you're uh, what, 50? But Roxanne was my introduction. You're 51? I'm 50. 50. I'm 50. That's that was a good guess, man. Sorry yeah. to go one a year over, but yeah, I'll take guess. it. Yeah. It's about because I'm so jacked. The, mm-hmm. And then Mantronics, then Will Smith was a huge. People sleep on how big he was to hip hop. He was a great, like, he was the marijuana of hip hop. It's got to be crazy when they go, when you get a music director who reaches out and is like, yo, can we can we get a track from you? And you're like, like yeah man i just kind of signed up to do this they would do that with commercials they'd be like we hired you extra comedian can you make this funnier and you're like i just got the fucking i just got here like what do you want me to do like <laughs> have you seen my stand-up what am i gonna fucking yeah yeah exactly do an abortion joke you, in the middle of this fucking you gotta kind of adjust whatever it is all, all the brand deals and stuff that i've done ended up working out pretty well because they would let me take a lot of the creative you've done some pretty cool control. brand deals too we did like let me think i did pizza hut jimmy john pizza hut was like just horny shit like me in a bathtub and like yeah. smooth music dr pepper jimmy john's was uh jimmy john's is fucking did you, did you watch that 
Jimmy John. No, I, I know about Jimmy John. You like Jimmy John? I like Jimmy John's. You, you like the guy himself? You met him? No, no, no. I haven't met him. No, uh, I haven't met him. But you I just like Jimmy, like Jimmy John's. John's. I like okay, cool, Jimmy cool, John's. Cool. Well, I have a uh, card for unlimited Jimmy John's for life, so we can go sometime. Let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't take that card away from me when they watch me eat. <laughs> Jimmy John's date, bro. Uh, and so uh, I did there. Just honestly, like even more than music videos, it might have been the highest production value uh shoot that i've done we did a really? jimmy john's commercial that was like a bachelor but it was all moms just you know That's i love it when they see my brand and they get it and they're down to type into that and make it like kind of fun and, and dope so oh yeah I, that yeah that is cool i did, did that yeah did that with jimmy john's and then dr pepper was the more recent one where they let us they let us make a song and you know every time that i ever get some sort of sync request or something and they they have specific rules we go in and we're like how are we going to do this? But but I've got good enough producers now. It's actually the same guy that did that and the Good Burger one, Diamond Pistols. Shout out Diamond Pistols. Um, we just made it. Both of them. I mean, I love the, the Dr. Pepper song, Strawberry Creamin. Oh, yeah. 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 Strawberry Creamin. <laughs> and uh, the Good Burger one's even better. Really? Mm -hmm. So wait, what is a, what does a good producer entail? Well, this kid can play just about any instrument uh very well mm -hmm. and honestly there's like three main producers i work with let me just shout them out dwilly well i guess four dwilly y2k diamond pistols and jason rich and what these guys can do is i'll get in the room with them and have ideas where i can't play any instruments and i don't know the names of the notes but i have a really good understanding of music and how and and what sounds good so basically i'll pull in references of things that i like like samples that i like blah 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 and then these guys can take that and they'll pick up an instrument and like play something similar or i'm like yo grab this from you know uh what's the song by holonos i can't uh what's wrong with I wonder you fuck bills. <laughs> uh, I can't. I can't go for that. By Hollow Notes. Yeah, I was like the other day. I, I was can't like, go for that. Ooh. I can't go for that. It was like this sound. Oh. I was like, no, 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 no. I was like, hey, bro, we need that in the song. We need this. So I'll sit there and I'll play references for a while, and we'll start adding things into a beat. And then I'll, I'll like, I at least get the BPM and the drum style and everything. So then I'll kind of like, what's like the what's what's like the perfect BPM for a a song, a rap song, like in your opinion? My most common one by far is 160. And really? I think with a lot of artists it is, or maybe it's just myself and Baby No Money, we do a lot of 160. But 120, I, 120 beats per minute gets me flowing into a vibe yeah. that I disappear, my brain disappears. Some of my some of my bigger songs are around that range as well, like my older shit especially. Um, and 100 BPM, it's either real slow or it's real fast. And yeah. I, love, I love that as well. Um, but no, so it's, it's all people that can play just about any instrument. They all have their own sort of style, but it's like, if I come, come into the room and I have some sort of idea or concept that I want to go off of, they can make it happen. So I'm going to get a little bit better at production, but like, there's no chance I can, you know, like reasonably reach their level of production of skill, you know? Do so. you come in, do you come in lyrics already? No. And all. so, and so you You're, come in. Go ahead. I just want to. I want to give like a. I'm gonna look right at the camera. I want. I just want to give like a sort of a PSA for anyone who doesn't really listen to hip hop or or under. I guess, I guess anyone who doesn't really fully understand how music works. A lot. I, I will get messages. I know that's not what you're asking, but I will get messages oh, yeah. from people where they ask, "What do you write first, the beat or the lyrics?" and it's pretty much impossible to write lyrics and then make a beat. Like, no, no one does that. You get the beat and then you write to it. I just want everyone out there who <laughs> isn't educated to know that you get a beat. You at least get the drums. You That's get something. That's so funny. You ready for this? So I wrote a country song and I wrote the lyrics first. And then I told T-Pain, can you help me uh, make the song? And we we talked about it for a long time because I worked with T Pain too on the same thing. Snoop did it first, and then T Pain did the next year. Well, you can build around. <laughs> no, but the no, but lyrics, I think that's why yes. it never happened. Oh, I think oh, that's why it never okay, happened. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> I was gonna yeah. say it'd be pretty hard to do. Well, I, so I'm good at I'm good at. So I would ju sometimes as a writing exercise, as a joke, I would write uh, my um, my. Uh, album list of songs if i was going to do an album 
So just as a writing exercise as a comic. Nice. It, and so we were doing a show. We, we were doing. I was doing a show with T Pain, and we and T Pain's extremely uh, constantly creative. Super. Like he's so talented. He's, Shout out to T Pain, man. He is always has. He has his whole studio in his green room. You should call him. He, he has. You should call him. Do you have my phone. phone? I'll call him. Call him. See the answers. Anyways, keep going. And so I said to him, I want to do a song called Mississippi Lickin'. Mississippi Lickin'. Yeah, it's about eating ass, really. Yeah, baby. But it's really, it It's like the Mississippi like, mud? Like, I don't know, Mississippi, you know, yeah. Does anyone know? I, I just, it's like. Isn't that a drink? It's a treat to be, treat to beat your feet on the Mississippi mud. I don't know, my mom, how old are you? 50. 50. My mom used to sing to me as a kid. She's like 68, so that's probably why. It's a little bit so, uh, wait, 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 hold on. Get my phone. Let's see who's FaceTiming answers first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, it was Mississippi Lickin', and it was about, it was a, it was an, it was going to be a double entendre about some eating a chick's ass. That's why I thought Mississippi Mud was. Yeah, and then the other idea was getting, uh, getting spanked as a kid in the South, getting like a switch to your ass, like it's a Mississippi Lickin', like uh, kind of dark. It's, right, but, it's, yeah. but it's like a double entendre, and so <clears throat> I forget I wrote a bunch of lyrics for it, but you're right, you got to have the beat first. I mean, I have a full document in my uh, Google Drive that is like lyrics that I wrote and either didn't make it somewhere or I'm like on a plane with one beat and I write the lyrics out to flow to that BPM or whatever. Yeah. And you can take those and you can change little things to make it work with other beats. But you can't, you 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 need to have the beat and the speed and all that before you're... Do you, yeah. do you sometimes catch phrases where you go, where you'll hear someone say something and then you'll and then you'll go oh those two go together like um uh I'm, you you do this you do this very well uh i'm you trying listen, to think you, of, i'm trying to think of one of your music? lyrics you've heard, you've heard my music yeah of course yeah you, yeah yeah name, name two songs uh, the fuck we were just listening uh what's the one where you throw where you got the girls when you're throwing the money and the fucking school table and but betty was is it no betty? i don't think that's it school table that's i couldn't like, tell you one in t Pain song is there a kangaroo uh no no, but your flows. I I love. Uh, I wish I could fucking. It's got fucking forty eight million views. I, I I wish I could tell you because I like the way Mr. Clean. No, I don't fucking know. I don't I'm know. Not gonna, All right, whatever, can, whatever. Can you name one of the names of my specials? The cabin. That's not special. Whatever. But I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's not what I. But it, like what I was wondering is I was watching you. Take. I, I wish I could get the exact fucking video. Can you have someone downstairs texting me? You were taking, was that what we were listening to? And so that what I was saying, showing That's everyone what I like, because you take things and then Gravy Swayze. Gravy Swayze. That's a song. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that, that is Betty, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gravy yeah. Swayze. Do you, do you, are you sitting there and you see something and you go write it down and then go, oh, I forgot my, what's up, baby? How you doing? Good, how are you? Can you see me? I can't see you. It's really dark. Bro. Oh, you're in the dark. Oh, okay. So, um, me and Bert Kreischer, as they say, yeah, we we wanted to see who who would, if we called you, who would answer first. But I, but I, it's he got me. I got I got your ass, man. So we here, bro. Jesus Christ. Bert, Bert, Bert. What's up? What up, baby? I'm trying to pitch him Mississippi licking. Yeah, man. Oh, get in there. <laughs> I, I mean it does sound like a good song for me man we just we were we were we wanted to say that we we fuck with you a lot man and you're you're mad talented and a great person bro oh, thank you guys, man. absolutely right, man all right come out do my pod hey hey you know what he live he lives about seven minutes from my house so you better pull up hey let's do let's do a, a something's burning what the three that? of us my cooking the, show oh yeah oh please yeah, yeah. let's oh. do my cooking show cooking show us three pull up on my new studio it'll, it'll be beautiful all right, Payne. Peace, baby. We love you. Um, Smooth. No, but you, like, so when you write, I love that guy. So nice. He's the sweetest dude. So talented. Have you yeah. seen his his uh, tiny desk? No. Oh yeah, the of course. Concert yeah, 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 yeah. No, no auto tune. Sensational. Yeah. He was he. Uh, um. Yeah, I watched. We watched him sing. Uh, sing. Um, you want to put this on? It might. It might fit your pinky. I, I feel like you do. Bigger hands than me. Oh shit. Ah no. That's fine. Yeah. There you go. It's gotta be left pinky. Well, who put my wedding ring back on? Man? Yeah, a little pinky ring. It's fucking <laughs> Yeah, bro. It's fucking heavy as shit. It's like when you first buy a Rolex 
and you're like, God damn, I never noticed my wrist so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I mean, that is like, I've only worn it a few times. Like, well, like I said, it's probably the first time in public. When I walk, rock it out, I'm just, you know, bumping into things. It's crazy. Oh, it's problems. fucking great. Who's that? Mm, T-Pain? Mike Koff. I don't know who that is. It's all good. Um, no, you kind of look like Chris Hemsworth. Yes, dude. Do you get that a lot? Thank you, dude. Well, I get that, or I'll get like Owen Wilson, and mm. and I really prefer uh, it, it's it's a uh, huge this compliment. fucking tequila is insanely good. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. This I'm, tequila is fucking insanely yeah. good. I'm glad. You, I hope you keep the Jaguar for a while mm. for your your future black um, bachelorette parties, mm. dude. Black 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 bachelorette parties are the fucking shit. Yeah. When you see when you go to Nashville, go on the strip, or the best place to see them is Memphis. I did this on did Beale this. Street. Oh, Memphis is where the black ones are at. The yeah. Beale Street, mm -hmm. dude. That's that fucking place is hot. I that love. Place is I hot. love everything in Tennessee, man. It's great. It's great. I was yeah. in Nashville very recently, on like a Sunday, just turning up, and it was it was bachelorette party. Do you know what I like everywhere. about you? You're you're authentically you 100 percent of the time. Like even so? talking to T Pain, you didn't like. Cause sometimes I'll if I talk to black guys, I'll talk blacker. Like I'll go like, "What's up, bro?" Or yeah, I don't do it that bad, but what? like. I mean, bruh. I mean, yeah, I think bruh like, is, is wider than anything. But yeah, but yeah I, I, I get what you. <laughs> What's up, bruv? <laughs> I, I get what I get. What you're saying. My um, buddy uh, Tom Segura does it really bad. Like if he talks to a black guy, it's almost like blackface. Like he goes like he's like he's like yeah yeah yeah, and you're like you don't talk like that, and he's like just shut the fuck up. For me, I'm um I don't know. I guess I've just kind of developed. My, hey, Pete, can my, I get another one? Normal speech. Yeah, I'll take a little bit more as well. Sweet, <laughs> sweet. So. Okay, so let's talk about my about? wish list of who I'd collab with. Yes. T.I. in a heartbeat. T.I., legend. Dude, legend. And his, his, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is that makes a great rapper. Like, I, I was watching you this morning. We're all sitting around watching you. Uh, Victoria, our Victoria is, is a big fan of yours, and she has been a fan of yours for a while. It's one of the girls I met yeah, down there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And she was... Um, right, left, or middle? I don't know. Okay, word. All good. And so when we when this first happened, I don't know how you know how this happened. Didn't like, we meet... Didn't someone Didn't someone meet my tour manager on a plane or something? It might... That might have been how... Christian, the sound guy, was sitting next to one of my best friends, Andrew Puya. Uh, he's my tour manager on a plane. Yeah. And I guess it all kind of worked out. And then, and then Victoria came up to me and she goes, yo... Young Gravy left a comment on one of your pictures about your wife. And I was like, for real? <laughs> oh, like, I remember yeah. that a while back, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Yeah, and that, you know what? I'll just, I'll make it quick. That was because I was watching the cabin and I had, I had COVID. I found out that I had COVID and I was in Atlanta and I, and you were, you know, this is early on when you couldn't, you couldn't fly or anything. So yeah. I was staying, sleeping on my friend's couch in Atlanta and your show dropped like that day. And I was like, all right, well, I'm just gonna lay here. So then I learned everything about you that day. I, I, I had heard your name, <laughs> yeah. but but I watched the cabin that day. And then I was like, I followed you and I was like, all right, I'm gonna like fuck with this guy a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no, it was great. It was yeah. great. And then that's when we first started, like you come up and you come up in my, like I said, you always just show up in my, I had to get rid of my YouTube, uh, my YouTube login because I was coming up too much in my own YouTube login. Yep, 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 and I was yep. like, I got to get that a That happens, yep, that happens. I, and, then I, and then I started finding that the internet's really fun if you're, if you're not famous. Yeah. Like, if you're not famous, you just got to, you just get it, you get a I brand have, new. Yeah, I have multiple accounts. Get a burner yeah. account yeah, and yeah, then yeah. start, and then find your real interests. Mm -hmm. My interests are like surfing, uh, uh, but I don't surf, but surfing, skateboarding, uh, watches, uh, boat launch videos. Dude, I love all the, the action sports stuff. Each TV in my house has like a different sort of genre on it because yeah. I don't sign my YouTube in, but each TV is like a smart TV that can use YouTube. Yeah. So it's like whoever spends time in that room, you can see what they're on. Yeah. So it was like my room and it's like ASMR and like oh. fireplace, fireplace at night. And then like, I don't know, skateboarding videos and it's like a random collection. And there's other rooms that are just like animal fights it's like i don't know who was in here but it's animal like, fights are fucking pretty <laughs> fucking pretty awesome. entertaining dude do you ever yeah. follow nature is metal crazy nature no, is metal I, I saw it on reddit yeah <laughs> my daughter <laughs> there's a there's a uh, moose and a bear 
on a street and I, it's a nature's metal when i know this isn't going to go well yeah I'm and i never. and my daughter isla is like the sweetest kid and oh. i go and she goes wait 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 i want to see what that is i go no you don't want to see she goes no don't switch so we're on my i'm on my instagram and then the bear just grabs the moose's baby moose mm. and just rips it apart she goes oh my god why would you follow something nature's like metal is wild nature's metal is fucking legit kids getting hurt i can't stop my wife loves fat people falling or not they're just people falling and my saw, wife will piss her pants watching I, someone fall i saw some really wild um nature i guess nature is horny activity the other day basically i'll, I'll just explain it i think people gonna, could you know this is pc enough or pg enough it doesn't uh, need to be the whatever <laughs> tell me the dirty the, version this basically this i was just i was kind of disgusted and shocked but i was also like this is crazy that dolphins are this smart a dolphin bites off the head of a fish right this is this is in a zoo right this is not like just a wild yeah. dolphin someone is filming through the, the little screen the window and uh the dolphin bites off the head of a fish and starts fucking the fish fish's body like it's a flashlight see that's what i'm into <laughs> i'm in i was that. just like man I, like I, I was disgusted but i was also like that's kind of impressive kind of that's, fucking brilliant. yeah, yeah that's forgot. kind of fucking brilliant i always <laughs> wonder why more animals don't fuck each other like, like why hasn't a gorilla fucked a bear that'd be sick um it's a good question i, I mean, mean like, i mean it's kind of like I feel like there's one in like a thousand weirdos out there. Yeah. At least in the human, you know, gene pool that is like down to fuck like an animal. Yeah. So I would think that like yeah. out of that 1,000 of gorillas, like the chance of them surviving long enough to find a bear and fuck it is pretty low. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life we're faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. I know for a fact, I was just talking about this in therapy about a, a uh, thing that I want I wish I could tell you exactly what it was you'd be so, very interested in this read <laughs> but I was like do I do it by myself or do I do it with a with a group of guys because when you do something by yourself sometimes you get isolated and then all the criticism lands on you but if you do it with other people then you can write off the criticism and go well uh, that's what I was talking about in therapy listen if you're dealing with these types of decisions whether you're like me and it's about your career if I feel like it's always about my career or your relationship or anything else Therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything else. The more you practice, the easier it gets. I've been in therapy for a very long time, and I can feel it when it's rearing up. When I haven't gone to therapy, sometimes I don't go to therapy when I'm on the road because I'm talking too much already or if I'm doing a ton of podcasts an hour more. Dude, I feel it back up on me. I only do therapy online. For me, if you're starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It is entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you got to do is fill out a brief questionnaire, questionnaire, and you get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can also switch therapists at any time for no additional charge, which is great because quite often the first therapist you get isn't the isn't going to be the, the perfect one. You got to listen. It's like buying a car. You don't buy the first one you see on the lot. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Bert today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Bert. Attention, all my bearded beasts. From stubble to Maine, if you didn't already know, Manscaped now sells beard products. You heard that correctly. The leader in Below the Waist Grooming changed the game with their Beard Hedger Pro Kit. And now they're going a step further with their brand new Handyman, an electric face shaver for a quick and convenient way to achieve a clean shave and look. Whether you're looking sharp up to your neckline or giving that face a smooth finish, this Handyman has you covered. Go to manscaped.com and use code BERT for 20% off and free shipping. It's time to go from 5 o'clock shady to yeah baby this thing is a juggernaut of fixing faces first off it's a cordless trimmer that has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 hair cutting lengths all in one guard so no more messy drawer full of extra add-ons and trust me that is so fucking frustrating when you have all the add-ons from all the past clippers you've had it's just so confusing that's right this thing the face groomer doesn't need to be that hard it's got 20 different beard lengths 
in just one guard. I love it. We have it here at the office, and it's so nice to go to a four and just clean myself up every single day and know that it's set on a four. It's set on a four, clean it up. Go to an eight, clean it up. So get 20% off plus free shipping with the code BERT at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code BERT. Hit the refresh button with Manscaped. When you think about it, how many people have fucked animals and no animals have really technically fucked a person? Dolphins, horses. Dolphins, yeah. I think dolphins are the number one culprit. Yeah, dolphins are Because they're smarter and they're horny. Do you see Maria, Maria Carey, Mariah Carey do her high-pitched thing to a dolphin? No. Was it cool? You know she does that? Ah. Yeah, she's got a crazy vocal she range. She was swimming with dolphins and she started matching the dolphin and then the dolphin, all of a sudden she outpitched the dolphin. And the dolphin lost its fucking mind. Like, just like, shut the fuck up. Like, it's a slam dunk contest, NBA weekend. Damn, shut the pissed. fuck up. The shit got pissed. Dude, it was like, it was crazy. Did you hear about the, the like, experiment back in the day with the LSD and the dolphins? Have you heard about this? Hold on. Is this where the guy lived with the dolphins? No, I think there's probably a lot of weird dolphin shit Keep out going. there. Yeah. I, mean, I remember hearing about, like, dolphin rape caves and everything. I don't know if this is all that shit's real dolphin but rape caves where it was like oh dolphins will gang up and drag people into a cave and then rape i, I think that was a little bit maybe it happened once and that was kind of like cap if it happened but there's... once it's still too many times <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely it's it's a... <laughs> if, if, like if you go into a bar and you're like you're never gonna believe how my snorkeling trip went <laughs> See, nine yeah. dolphins pull me into a cave and rape you they're like yeah but it's only happened once you go but it still happened to me <laughs> yeah no i mean i don't think you make it out of the cave i think you no, get... you definitely yeah, you're, you're not. Nine you're not, dolphins rape you. You're not going. You're not going to the bar. Afterwards. I don't think they let you up to breathe. Yeah. Keep going. Wait, wait. Tell me about the dolphin. I know this dolphin LSD thing. So, so I know there's a, a few like tests they did where they were trying to test. This is like I think 70s or 80s, trying to test um, the brain power of dolphins. So they they fed LSD to a dolphin, and then I think the the marine biologist that was working with the dolphin also took LSD, and then they were like swimming together. And having like a moment and doing all the shit. And then the woman fell in love with the dolphin. There's a woman and a male dolphin. And then they had sex. So so this woman, I could be, I could be I slightly I wrong. This. I but, think this is the same lady that lived. So Google, there's a there's a there's a look, whole documentary on it, right? Look it up. I don't know about a documentary. I just heard about it. But basically this from what my knowledge, this woman had sex with a dolphin on acid, and then the dolphin felt shamed and swam down to the bottom and committed suicide by not breathing because it fucked a person yeah like they had sex and i think she just yeah okay this is it oh wow the nasa funded project that went wrong hey you guys i gotta pee go pee you'll do this i'll tell i'll tell the story jaguar there's a book that i gave my mother called miss kelly she remembers taking all her eye it was about a story about a cat right there but get to the part where the dolphin fucks the lady whoa sinead o'connor died when? Today. Oh fuck! How did she die? Got to be cancer. Can't be like. Okay, so wait, Mary. He was very, very interested in my anatomy. If I was sitting there and my legs were in the water, he would come up and look at the back of my knee for a long time. He wanted to know how things worked, and I was charmed by it. This is a dolphin, Carl Sagan, one of the young astronauts at Green Bank paid astronomers at green bank paid a visit to report back to train we thought it was an important to tell to have the dolphins teach us dolphinese if there's such a thing dolphins get sexual urges says the vet andy williamson who looked at after the animals health at dolphin house dolphin house so this is the place i'm sure peter had plenty of thoughts go to Do see if dolphin house is where the dude lived with the dolphins there was a house where they lived with dolphins. I saw a documentary on this. This is where the woman fucked the dolphin. You're, yeah, this woman right. fucked a dolphin. Wow. And then what, did, did it commit suicide? Uh, I think it did. I think I watched the documentary. They, I think they all lived in a glass house. Like, I mean, like a, like a dolphin house. And they all a interacted. Dolphin house. Yeah. What is that? What is that? Like an underground or underwater? It, though, there's pictures. I've seen the documentary. I, I've... I've Look up Dolphin House. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's them. They dolphin were cute dolphin. until it all went sideways. She's pretty fucking hot. Yeah, she does look pretty. Dolphin's fucking hot, too. Who are the ultimate MILFs? 
Like, like I'll tell you my milfs. Now my milfs are gonna let's be. Go, let's, let's go one for one. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll swap. Susan Sarandon. Susan Sarandon's bad. I liked her. She's. she's hot. Feel she's, free to Google these women as we say them. Okay. She's fire. Um, she's my, so hot in fucking Bull Durham. My number one. Wow. My number one by like, I don't say a long shot is Sophia for Sophia Vergara. Have you met her? No, I haven't met her. I know she just got divorced. She's uh. Look at Susan Sarandon. That's Susan Sarandon. She's bad. We love yeah. her. She's fucking. She's like seventy nine right now. I think. She's still. Sophia, they have to at seventy nine. God, she's <laughs> fucking hot. I can't find her. Mind blowing how hot she is, man. Right. Well, no, you know she was married to. She was married to. Uh, some swole. the pitcher. The pitcher. No, no. Sophia Vergara is. Married. I don't even know swole. how old is she. How old is she? Is that does she qualify as milk? Sure. I would guess. 51 oh look at that she's 51 years old i might have read that subconsciously but <laughs> jesus christ i guess it was 50 ish yeah she's bad man she is so okay gorgeous. all right uh i guess madonna's off that list um why uh, uh i don't I, think she's i might never thought she's hot so I, she was hot as fuck when i was a kid she was fucking beautiful when she had her teeth the space between her teeth dude that was when she was the hottest tooth caps are hot yeah um I'm trying to think who, uh, I'll tell you who's, I don't even know if she's a MILF. It's weird for me to guess them because they got to be my age. We'll go, we'll go Cougars. We'll go Cougars because okay. sometimes they don't have kids. Okay. Martha Stewart doesn't have kids, but I still call her. Uh, who? Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. I, Does she have it? I don't, I'm pretty sure she doesn't have kids. All right. Type, type in Martha Stewart. How, I, how, how old do you think she is? Look at her. Uh, she's got to be 76. She's 80. She's 80? 81. She looks good she for looks 81. gorgeous for 81. Mm -hmm. She looks good for 81. Uh, my, my number two would probably be... Oh, man. Maybe Halle Berry? Oh, God, yeah. I don't know how old she is, but... She's got to be... Uh, I don't know if she has kids. 56. She's 56. Wow. God, she's gorgeous. Wait, does Rosario Dawson count as a MILF? She's got a kid, but she adopted her. But Rosario's... She's a MILF, then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rosario is one of the most stunning Ooh. women I've ever been... Rosario Dawson? One of the oh, most stunning her, women Oh, her, yeah, I've yeah, yeah. Around. She's great. I she's mean, great. like, distractingly attractive. To the Isn't point where... is annoying when you see that and it's like, man... I wore, I, she pulled her mask down. We were in COVID and she pulled her mask down one time to talk to me. She was like, hey, let me tell you something. As she pulled her mask down, I went, that never happens. Stop. Usually it's like, they pull their mask down and you're like, ugh. Yeah, you know, because like everyone looked good with a mask on, and then Rosario would pull her mask down, and you're like, "Mark and this shit." Oh my God. Um, I would love to. I would. <laughs> uh, what about porn stars? Are there any good porn star milfs? I'm really into like Lisa Ann, shot Brandy Love, Lisa yeah. Ann, Lisa Ann, Lisa Ann's fucking great too. A like day? she's really good in press. I was with her for a little while. Really? Yeah. How long? Not long. Not long. <laughs> But long enough. We were we were we were good friends for a while. We hooked up for a little while. Then I brought her to the AVN Awards, and she hadn't been in ten years. And then, I guess I didn't I didn't really give her enough attention. Oh really? It was kind of this thing's too heavy for me. I literally it's all I think about is that it's on my hand. It was oh yeah here I'll take it. It was it was kind of fair, um because I guess I didn't know what her expectations were, but I was like at the porn awards for my first time in my life. I'm partying with people, having a good time, yeah. meeting people. She wanted me to like spend more time with her, but she didn't make it clear until the end because she bailed, left Vegas before the actual awards. And then I show up. I'm like, all right, well, like she's not, she just wasn't answering my phone at all. So I end up just showing up with the male porn stars and like a group. And it was, it was cute. They're on, dude, male porn stars are the nicest people ever. They oh, have, yeah. They have the best life. Ever. They're very soft dudes a They're lot like, of times. They're not like, they're not like the guy you think like uh we're f not friends but we we know uh owen gray you ever seen him owen gray he's a distracting person to watch fuck <laughs> he is. There's, a, there's a couple of friends of mine that do porn that i have to like i'll start watching a video and i have to switch because it's one of the homies but owen uh, gray is uh he looks it looks like i'd be uncomfortable watching that yeah he's uh well no it's, it's not uncomfortable he's really good he's got a hog on him he had a hog, but, I'm sure, but he's, just, he's too slim, you know? It's yeah, well, like, no, but I, well, I, I left a, I one time said, yeah, his dick only looks big because he's probably like 5'6", and then he wrote back, I'm 6'4". And I was like, just that's why he just sent me a DM, I'm 6'4". 
And I was like, that's oh, hilarious. Fuck. That's hilarious. But uh, he is he's distracting to watch fuck because he's really good. Like he's fucking, he puts it down. He puts it down. Good for he him. He does good put it down. My boy Spencer, aka Damon Dice, he he throws he throws it heavy. He's one of the more popping ones. But he um Wait, how many porn stars have you had sex with? A couple? Female porn stars that I've had sex with, I would oh, say. Start with males. Well, yeah, I haven't <laughs> I haven't fucked the males yet, but I do have a good friend who's a male porn star. A couple of good friends. Um, I think maybe like eight. Eight. Mm-hmm. Is it? Is it? Uh, is it intimidating to have sex with a porn star? It was the first time. Then I realized that all they want is a non-porn star to fuck, and they're like wholesome. You just my, want to have sex like regular sex. From my experience, porn stars are just like nice girls that smoke weed go to bed early and they they're horny as fuck always but they they prefer not a porn star because it's not transactional they want to have like normal dude sex i think a lot of them just don't like getting rammed by a giant dick all the time so it's like i could definitely provide that yeah so it's like yo (laughs) let me give you like a normal right now everyone just perked up i can date the porn star yeah let me just give you like a normal size penis real quick um (laughs) <laughs> and yeah they're great they're great they're great i i'm a big fan um i guess if you went on to like the i don't want to name names but pornhub like top 50 there's probably really like you know. can't name names of the porn stars you've been with no no no. i can name names i don't want to name names just to you know expose them but i would yeah. say if you went to the top 50 now, is it porn stars or only fan stars porn only fans is the number's way higher I think with porn <laughs> with, with porn stars, if you went to if you went to the top fifty, there's a solid seven or eight in there that are are, you know, have, I've have I've gotten the gravy tray. That's <laughs> here comes the gravy. <laughs> yeah, baby. Did you ever think that was gonna happen to you? Like Absolutely that you'd be able not. to get to have sex with porn stars? Absolutely not, man. And it, it's funny because uh, well, Lisa Ann was the first time I ever jerked off was lisa ann oh. so the fact that i got to go full circle and come back and hit later was great um so wait, did you do like because i like uh i can't say i can't say too much but like my wife and i are in like a rediscovery phase and so it's been fun it's been crazy it's been wild what does but, like, rediscovery mean uh she, my wife made a conscious decision to start dating me again like going like that's my boyfriend i'm gonna bring it and 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 it's been fucking insane it's been so much fun but i would imagine if you go if i if i was gonna have sex with a porn star i'd imagine i'd be like i'm gonna it's almost like getting a a rental ferrari for the day and you're like i'm gonna fucking do everything i can to this car i'm gonna drive it down sunset i'm gonna fucking take a picture in front of it i'm gonna go 120 on the mile like when you get a porn star do you go i'm gonna it's like a rental ferrari or do you go no i i i keep it just normal i just i want to fuck them do you know just and right, like and like and like i'm kind of sweet too like like i'll be sweet and that, that's what they like is they're used to like the like aggressive like you know on set everything's business thing i'm yeah. like i mean they are strictly business they come over they want to fuck maybe we'll watch an episode of a tv show and they're out which is you know if if that's what you're after if it's it's cool which is usually what i'm after and uh they they're all really really chill people i mean they know what they do if you, if you have that type of job and you're proud to do it and you're killing it like you you gotta have a good sort of head on your shoulders like yeah. they like they pe- also all the good ju- ones all the good ones seem to have it together people seem to judge them but it's like yo if 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 i know i'm speaking as a if i was a porn star the way that i would look at it as a business kid i know that i'm horny as fuck i'm hot i can turn people on like let me just get into that and just let it out and just be myself because that's kind of what i did with my music minus the you know the anal and it's like these girls are out there like just living their lives and showing off you know like their favorite thing to do and good for them it's the same as modeling but a little bit you know i I think it's the same as comedy like i I feel like like we all are doing something similar i put so much of myself out there that like i'm i'm subject to ridicule because i put so much of me out there and it comes with the territory i put same my family here. out there same here and, and and i put out yeah and same i'm an here. open book i'll tell you everything and that's kind of what porn stars do but in a lower in a different in a, in a more physical manner mm-hmm. there's a couple i would uh 
there's like a, a, a the the hit list of porn stars that you go all right uh i remember saying this to i remember saying this to Dude, my, could you give me a quick hit list for you oh yeah just give me like a like a like a any one that comes to mind right you know what's so funny is i said to someone like i I was saying to i think some of the guys at barstool i was like oh adriana chechik in a second and then they were like oh you're really freaky and i was like no actually not at all and they're like then why the fuck would you hook up with adriana chechik she's wild yeah she's she's wild and i was like queen i was like yeah i don't think and then and i think adriana is beautiful i think she's beautiful and i think she's a really cool person but then i was immediately i was like oh yeah that's not what i'm into like i would not be she would fucking overwhelm me yeah, like there's definitely. a couple that would just overwhelm definitely, me. Definitely. Christy Mack, I think Christy Mack's fucking adorable and a great person. I remember her, yeah, yeah, yeah. For real? Mm-hmm. I, I remember oh, jerk- oh, oh, no, oh, I remember oh, jerking oh. off to her. I didn't yeah. fuck her. No, no I Christy Mack was yeah. like is like uh, the sweetest person like that I've ever like one of the just coolest. I know her and I know, know her. I actually know her uh her boyfriend very very well. Like very well. He he's a one of the more fascinating dudes I've ever met. Which Ooh, wasn't there something? bad there it was, it was a long time ago okay 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 yeah cool. it was a Conti- long time continue, ago. continue no but but Who else? she came to my premiere and her boyfriend was there and we ended up sitting pete was didn't we sit with her boyfriend for like a fucking hour and a half two three the hours friends of porn stars are also really cool fucking because, cool because they literally are down to accept they have so much emotional intelligence and maturity that they can literally just be like yo my girl's fucking other guys but i like her and it doesn't matter that's her job let me just do my thing too and i don't think right. and i think now christy mack doesn't fuck other dudes i think she either does chicks or just her dude and puts it on only fans but chris I, okay. christy mack is a is a bad one because i like her as a person so yeah. I, I would probably never like in the fantasy world lisa ann i'll tell you why lisa ann is interesting to me lisa ann is like if my wife did coke <laughs> okay because they've got a similar like like school marm vibe you know with the dark hair and puts on the glasses and they're fucking fun she's entertaining as fuck she's really she's cool. really good she's really, on i'm sad been, that she got mad at me because she was really sweet oh, yeah know. um who was the who was the um back in the day there was this fucking chick that was like there's also brandy love if you know brandy love that no was my, up. my first interaction for real that was the first one mm-hmm She's pretty popping in the she... MILF space. Oh, yeah. whoa. Oh, I know Brandy Love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you didn't, I would be disappointed. Yeah, I know yeah. Brandy Love. God, that's got to be. How do you not fuck this up? Like, that's, like life right now, you're 26. Seven. 27. Just, just you got money. Seven, yeah. You got money. You can, you can make everything work, right? Like, are you, there's going to sound like an old man talking to you. Are you in therapy? Mm-hmm. yeah i had to cancel it yesterday because my phone was getting hacked oh for real <laughs> yeah yeah my phone started getting hacked yesterday and these guys were like trying to ask i don't know they but like you not got, too much you on got, that but yes. you got everything you want the therapy you you party you enjoy partying mm-hmm. you you seem like a really smart guy i, I mean and, 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 and i only you. say that from like the little bit of research i've done about you, you seem very open like Absolutely. you seem like a dude that like if rogan met you you guys would click pretty quick. Oh, I know it would. I guarantee yeah. it. I guess I'll. I guess long story short, man. I I grew up with parents who are much older. My dad had already raised three kids, divorced his wife, and then married my mom. So I was an only child, with two parents who are much older, have experience. Uh, one's a doctor. One's a retired uh, insomnia. Uh, but it, yeah, my dad studied insomnia and he's a really? researcher and he, he was part of a team that invented uh rumble strips <laughs> that's one of the coolest facts i have about that's my family so cool. yeah, yeah yeah my dad was born in switzerland too really came here when he was 21 with no money and ended up going to the university of chicago so so here's my question how do you get like do you think about this at all like how do you get to snoop's career how do we know how do i how do i at my funeral when i'm 89 years old when i'm martha stewart's age mm-hmm. i mean how do i nice. get how do i get my kids are sitting there my kids are fucking 50 i guess i don't know or whatever my kids are like 50 or 60 and young gravy comes up to speak at my funeral and you go i met bert when he was 50 years old and i was 27 i just moved to hollywood and uh we remained friends we we're both fans of the lightning and and lisa ann and <laughs> and things, like yeah. but how do, how do i how do how do you because I know, I know how I can be old with money. 
how do you keep this? Do you ever think that way? Like, how do you keep the gravy train going? Like, how, like, because you see so many people splash and then go away, but you're not, I don't think you're that guy. Okay, so so I guess that this is a perfect way for me to continue sort of what I was saying is is my parents were older, wise, raised me, I think, in a good way, but I had enough freedom. And then I grew up in Minnesota, which is one of like the nicest people that I've met, you know. Very nice down to earth Midwesterners. Yeah. Went to Wisconsin, studied whatever, ended up doing marketing and finance and really started like become an entrepreneur i started a few different businesses in college and like you, you're probably a dj not a dj i know none of it was musical oh, really? related at first yeah well first business i did was in high school as a weed dealer and then which which i was I really playing you. man i was i, I, I was marketing at that you. point man i fucking <laughs> was buying weed for a certain price and then i was in the ap classes so i was c convincing those kids to like try weed and then i was putting like trident layers in my in my weed bags to make it smell really good and like making up crazy names and everything yeah i was like really hustling and i would never smoke weed when i was selling it um which is a, a key for anyone who wants to trap um and then college i started a company with a friend called the pizza roller where we basically bought this fancy like electric golf cart thing and we attached a heater to the back of it and we would we would hire college kids to sell pizza by the slice to the drunk people at the bars in madison and that worked oh, really well I yeah, know yeah. Who you are so you're like my buddy hutch so i would do a, just you always just you always have a hustle always having a hustle and a cool idea and something and then i ended up working for an actual startup accelerator where they bas basically put me as a marketing guy where where I would, a business would, there would be basically like a PhD student at Madison, it's one of the biggest research universities, and they would invent something and then they would need to make it sexy. So these guys would bring me like a Windows 7 PowerPoint of what their thing does. And I would like think of a name, think of a way to sell it, think of like who the, the, the audience is, all this sort of thing. So like sleep apnea, or a sleep apnea machine, for example, or like East Struggle Eat Street was actually one of the ones which ended up becoming Uber Eats. East Street was one of the ones that started in Madison. And I helped them. I was like, oh, we got to make it like green because it's different than, you know, Facebook and all these other ones. Um, little things like that. So I always had that marketing thing, the branding, and I forgot what the question so, was. No, but no, but so so, do you? Where do you see yourself in ten years? Oh, in ten years, I probably will want to stop touring at some point in the next like i don't know maybe four or five and i i don't think i want to just try to keep on going and dropping music until it's like all right he's washed up you know i don't want to like push it that far does that happen to music i think it does i think there's artists at least with rap especially where it's like there's still y'all you're still making music this one like this long later i i mean it's i guess it's not even that concerned because i think that if i was still really passionate about it i would be fine it's more like i want to just like have a legacy that is dope that i really like and then kind of just quit you know i don't want to ever have a miss so i think i want to do that so it's, it's a tough that's a it's tough because it's only a few people can jim brown it or or jerry seinfeld it and hang it up when you're at your height i yeah. was I, I you know hey pete can i get another one uh at a weird in a weird in a weird parallel to this i woke up this morning uh obviously i have the interview with you and so i'm 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 scrolling on you and i'm thinking how hungry you are <clears throat> how great it is to be hungry how f the fucking people would pay uh there are dudes out there that are showrunners that would pay half of their salary if not all of their salary to be hungry again like to be hungry to go like i want i want what jay-z has i want to run a label i want to i want i that. i'm hungry but i'm not as hungry as i was at one point i used to just for real yeah i mean when i started rapping i was literally everything i did need no motivation from anything i wouldn't have any inspiration needed i think i think everything kind of you know fizzles out a little bit i'm definitely so hungry but like i just i had goals that i set when i started rapping and i surpassed them 50, 50 times over and yeah. um i'm still hungry my, my my goal is mainly like to, to to be happy and stay happy but it's 
like i i don't think i want to be a superstar where i'm doing arenas or anything because <laughs> i already get recognized already, way too much arenas. Huh? You're already doing arenas. I mean, I'm doing arenas. Uh, well, you're talking about SoFi. Yeah, I don't want to do. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey! Just, just so you know, like the Emily Arena is the called the Emily Arena. Okay, true. Okay, true. <laughs> true, true, true. So I do do shows that you're are doing, like you're doing arenas. I have done five thousand, seven thousand. You've done twelve thousand. You've done nineteen thousand. I've. Yeah. The yeah. biggest. I mean, yeah, festivals and stuff. I like where I'm at. What's the biggest you perform to? In well, total. the Minnesota Viking Stadium was seventy two thousand. Yeah, hey buddy, you definitely do arenas. So, I do them, but I, I just hang on. You re hang on. Let's just put this in perspective for you. <laughs> Let's go. Let's hear it. Uh, point zero zero one percent of people in this world in this world will ever stand in front of seventy two thousand people and speak. Mm -hmm. That is a fucking point, huge accomplishment. Zero, zero. Probably that is it is zeros, probably more yeah. zeros yeah but that is a huge fucking accomplishment and so to downplay it it it, it suggests how grounded you are i say you don't even remember the big ones you're going well i don't want to do arenas like you still see yourself as like a fucking as like a a niche club act like a like a fucking like which is cool man i wish i wish i wish my ego did not speak as loud as it did at times i might i think i I think it's th my biggest flaw where I allow my ego to speak up and I go and then could maybe it, it calms me down or it tries to center me. Mm -hmm. So it sometimes it reminds you of like what you've accomplished. You know, sometimes it's good, but but I have to do it in private. If it's anything like that where like I'm feeling down, I have to like look at back at, you know, just either financials or like accomplishments or something, but like I don't know. I have a weird. I, I think maybe it's something to do with my upbringing in Minnesota. But I, like, your dad's from what you said, Sweden, Minnesota. My up, no, upbringing no, in Minnesota. No, my dad's from Switzerland. 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 Well, that's yeah. there's the they're there's very that that mentality is already ingrained in. Well, yeah. first of all, Minnesota mentality is like just yeah. You know, like like I remember growing up and it was like like I wear fancy shit now, but it was like when I was in high school, if you were to like show up in like something really like rich or fancy, you drive a fancy car to school. You're being a dick to anybody it was like people would hate on you because you're like oh like 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 bullying or whatever you would call it was that makes you a lame and it was like you're cool if you're just a chill normal person you know yeah yeah i don't know what was the it, first expensive thing you bought this is the backpack that i have here somewhere it's like a, <laughs> wait what is it oh it's a gucci backpack it's it was bright orange when i bought it it looks like here i'll, I'll carry it into the camera bought this um maybe six years ago i mean it was a beautiful orange color and i've worn it you've used the time. fuck out of that you've gotten every it. fucking penny out of that backpack every single pocket has its own use i travel with i mean i travel so much man I yeah i like i think you could get a good backpack that has as much room in it and make it work so what about cars do you buy cars no no cars what what were you what were you just talking about expensive Whole, stuff too but you've bought expensive shit and before that wholesome like the midwest vibe the midwest like vibe and keeping oh oh i just wanted to finish um i love doing the big shows and being in front of all these people and like having it's a good cool. time but i just i already i mean it's kind of my focus i'm tall as shit and recognizable but i get recognized all the time and that's kind of stressful sometimes and yeah and whenever i try to like form an intimate relationship with a girl they will get pressed when everywhere i go there's like girls on me or there's just any just in general anybody and like they hand her the phone to take a picture you know so i i would like to be a little bit i kind of like it when they tell my wife hey can you take a picture yeah but like <laughs> uh, i don't know what go, happens. hey remember honey <laughs> remember <laughs> when it's like yeah it's your wife now you're locked yeah. in you know i fuck around with my wife too much i make fun of her not i would but once you've been married as long as i have it's 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 i you have to remind yourself it's more than just your best friend it's your lover it's your fucking partner mm -hmm. sometimes you just remember like this is my buddy this is my best friend because that's how you spend so much of your time together and then you got to remember oh we're also intimate like this is i need to respect her because I, I say i'll say fucked up shit it's about, about my wife I'll, I'll yeah i mean I'm, any girl i have i'll you know i'll be funny and say some yeah. whack shit just so joking. are you striving to or do you think are you striving to 
get back to normal sometimes yes yeah trying to get back to normal and like be able to go do things where like i just feel completely normal because basically anywhere i go i'll end up like having to like take pictures i think what i want to do is just go to like like spend some time in a country where no one knows who the fuck i am and like you know what you know what's interesting is italy is not big on rap at all so I, like um, i think i might go out next month to stay in geneva with shania twain good friend and work on some music with her <laughs> just when he goes i'm trying to get back to normal i'm gonna go to sweden to hang out with shania twain. switzerland, switzerland. Did, I say, did i say sweden no i say it I oh say okay sweden. yeah you know ever no one no one knows the difference with shania twain fucking milf yeah absolutely shania twain pull a picture of shania twain someone just brought her up the other day still fucking has it she's still hot still fucking has it she also has a husband who's my friend so <laughs> wait how old she is uh, beautiful yeah she's gorgeous she is fucking beautiful yeah she's gorgeous so i'm going to stay with her for a little bit and just make some music and hang out in switzerland and then go to italy but i'm excited for italy because i think my fan base there is pretty low-key but you're also you also six seven i'll see yeah maybe maybe i'll have to take a picture it's like oh look at that tall blonde that you, kid. you draw like you draw the eye i'm six seven or i'm honestly like six eight but i usually say six seven because if i say six eight people are like no you're not no, no, no i don't want to have that I don't it's not even worth the time so. no it's uh you're you draw the eye like the second you walked in i went oh fuck i didn't realize how big you were i was also holding like a golden jaguar and bright yeah. shirt but yeah, yeah i like the shirt a lot thank you man yeah it's so my new look is trying to i'm trying to go less buttons but yeah. i just gotta i got a spray tan can i pitch you on spray tan that's always been my thing is the less buttons you, you do spray tans i just did one i'll do it with you i won't do it alone well i know what i'm doing next when this one runs out, I'm calling you, and we're getting spray tanned, and you will wake up feeling so attracted to yourself. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I'm very pale. I don't get tan, and it, buddy, I get sunburned, is. and I look hot when I'm sunburned. Sometimes I'll intentionally go Ooh. out. Sometimes if I have to like film a video that I know is going to be like popular, I have to go out onto my like balcony and like stare at the sun. Or I'll, well, I'll look at the sun with my eyes closed for yeah. ten minutes just to get a sunburn, and then walk back back inside just to do it because when i'm sunburned i don't get tan i get sunburned i'm gonna get you a spray tan i'm gonna i'm gonna get your number right now i'm gonna get get, you a spray tan let's get a spray tan and then i'll 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 bleach my hair a little a little bit you know you will look fucking i mean my my spray tan immediately just took any flaw out of my skin just disappeared my arms look bigger my chest looked bigger. Oh, Everything yeah. When you're tan, you look swole. Yeah. Yep, you look yep, fucking yep. swole as fuck. Yeah, baby. That's a Florida hint, too. Do you talk, hang out with your high school friends and college friends? A ton of them, yeah. yeah. I'm like, those are like, I mean, I've made enough friends out in L.A. now that, like, I have half of my friend group, I guess, is here. But I, I go back to Minnesota all the time. I, I had an apartment there, a, a condo, for a couple of years. I just moved out because I just was too busy. But, yeah. But, yeah. I love them. I, Do they I, I, bust your balls about like who you've become and where you've gone? No, because I'm the same person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they, 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 we have the same exact relationship we always had. Really? We all kick it. It's the best break is to go home to Minnesota, unless we go in public, because that's my biggest fan base by far. I'll get my dick ridden anywhere I go. But if I'm like back home with the homies, I'll throw parties at my mom's house, and it's just everyone that I grew up with. It's it's one of my happy places that's fucking great yeah god man i fucking like i have my buddies come out to the premiere of my movie and like my college friends you have a movie yeah we can't talk about it oh yeah but can i see it yeah i'll get you can you mean mute it and i can see it i'll get to you um but uh i can't talk about it because i stand in solidarity with the sag after strike and the writers they are my brothers yeah same here yep we stand in solidarity so I will not talk about it. And, and the thing we talked about earlier with the, we'll edit it with, out. With the song we'll and everything, we'll take it out. Yeah. But, you We're know. editing stuff out because we stand in solidarity yes. with the SAG after strike. Exactly. I can't imagine. I, I, the, I, I've i been wanting to go to a fucking strike line, but uh, but podcasting is like, you know, everyone should have a podcast. I wonder if we're ever a podcast strike. If you ever want to be nice. <laughs> if you ever want to like, if you ever want to like go walk down to, a, uh, I don't know how long I'll Stay, stick around but i'll go to a strike with you we can throw throw, throw some up signs. some signs yeah it'd be lit it'd be a good time man it'd yeah. be like where's rain wilson <laughs> i'm looking for some celebrities where's john ham <laughs> yeah we we gotta just pull up and act like we're just normies man we're if they said to you uh because it's happened before uh gravy we want you to reboot your favorite movie 
what would you do who would you who who what movie would you reboot and who would you be like for me if if i i don't i think we can definitely talk about the idea of movies but like if i could reboot a movie i would probably want to go to like like caddyshack and be one of the big players <laughs> dude <laughs> that was exact wow i wanted to be, be Roddy dangerfield and I, dude, that is so crazy because I was just preparing my exact, I actually talked to the guys at the movie shoot that I was at recently and they're like, we, we want to reboot more movies. And I said, Caddyshack. It's going to be so hard. And they were like, oh my God, that's a great idea. And I was like, as long as you make me the Chevy Chase character. Oh, that would be good. So if we did Caddyshack part two, dude, it's. it's I, I've been every character in Caddyshack throughout my life. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, I've yeah, been Danny. Okay, I've been yeah, Chevy I'm, Chase. I would say I don't know. I haven't been Roddy Dangerfield. I'm, yet. Roddy, I'm Roddy Dangerfield okay. right now. I think we need I like this part of my life the best. If I could make sure my health was like dialed in. Like I need to go to a doctor every month. Okay. I think I, think okay. I need to go to a doctor every I think month. I should probably go more often, yeah. When was the last time you were to the doctor? Well, I haven't I don't know. I mean I broke both my arms like two months That's ago. That's right. Just recently, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I haven't like gotten a checkup. Anyways, I, I want to get back to Caddyshack that was the answer i was going to give like what are the odds that we both have the exact same movie in so mind? then how would we who else would you put in it so you're ronnie dangerfield i think oh, be... or 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 i mean yes i think that's what i'd have to play but i love judge smales that's the, can that's, i tell that, you that's like the crazy white hair guy this uh, uh danny yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah the world needs ditch diggers too danny i think we get me if 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 people would agree i would love to be the chevy chase character I know that's a kind of a you know a bold statement because you know you kind of look like Danny says, though. Danny's the, Danny's the main hair. character. The, yeah, the bike riding. I could play. I could play that too. I, I could yeah. change up my role a little bit and be that. I think we need to get. Oh man, who 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 else could we get in there? Um, it would be so hard to remake that you would only fail because that movie such is a, so such great. Such a great movie, and it's yeah. so great on accident. You need Bill Murray. Who would be Bill Murray? Theo Vaughn. I was just. <laughs> I was Theo just Vaughn. trying to think. I was like, "What's Theo's role?" Theo Vaughn could be fucking. No, Bill Segura Murray. couldn't do that. Segura would be. Uh, that's not Segura's personality. I don't think he could play that. Theo character. Vaughn would be great as He's, yeah, like, Bill he, Murray. He Theo's like the perfect. Um, and then who else do you have in it? I'm trying to think. There's there's, there's the judge guy, Judge and, Smales. Um, uh, you could have like Paul F. Tompkins play Judge Smales would be perfect. I um, guess who's a pissed off older person? Uh. We get Mar <laughs> Mari Bill Burr, Bill Burr, Burr, Bill Burr Mari Povich. <laughs> yeah, no, Bill can, Bill's not uh, close enough to Smales. Smales is like a little blue. Bill's too blue collar. But like Judge Smales is the you know I I did a podcast with the guys at, at this podcast called Confused Breakfast where we pitched that Judge Smales is the hero in a Cobra Kai kind of way that like Judge Smales is really the hero. Like if you look at the movie. Judge Smales is just a guy that it's like busted his ass. He did he's the right thing. Run the, he's yeah. just trying to ha enjoy his fucking weekend at the country club. Rodney Dangerfield comes in and fucks it up. Danny fucks his niece, right? Danny comes in and fucks his niece. Who, who's the niece? The niece has got Ty. Be. Ty Chevy Chase's character. Judge Smales thought he was best friends with his dad, and and Ty Try Webb says, "My dad fucking hated you." The guy's world falls apart in this movie, and we go, "Yeah, fuck him." His and then he loses like ten thousand dollars at the end of the movie on a bullshit putt because the fucking course exploded and it rolled in. There's rules against that. There's rules against that. You know, you ever see That's Tigers? A great you see, movie. You ever see Tigers putt? Tigers blood. Tigers putt. Putt. There's a fucking. You ever see? Do you follow golf at all? Uh, not really, just because I have friends that do. And uh, what's his name? Brooks Kepka is a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Brooks yeah. is a bad motherfucker. Dope motherfucker. Yeah, Brooks is a great fucking good dude. Um, Tiger had a putt at the Masters. It was a it was a chip shot. So he hit a bullshit chip shot. They were talking about. Uh, I believe this that uh, missed opportunities are all, also opportunities, and so they were talking about this bullshit drive Tiger had on fucking seventeen at at the Masters or whatever hole it was, and he had a bullshit drive, and then he had a fucking horrible approach shot where he ended up over by the sand but from the sand he chipped it in but more importantly he chipped it in the most crazy roll and it rolled in and right before it rolled in this is right when he was switched over to nike 
right before it rolled in. It stopped on the lip. Can you pull up this just so you can see it? It's really beautiful. You know that you know what I'm talking about? And 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 it was just when he signed the Nike, and the Nike logo on the ball was all you saw before it rolled in. It was like Nike went. So it's obviously not intentional. He just, he just made it was just by chance. Every fucking penny they paid him, they just got back. Uh, it's it's probably yeah one it's of the most. It's not okay. So this wasn't like some conspiracy shit. It no, was, no, it was no. Just, this it was is just gorgeous. This okay. is all right. This is gonna take us. Nope, nope. Okay, hang on. Stop. So, I mean, type in Tiger Woods, maybe. Okay, so Tiger Woods Masters. Uh, chip shot. No, don't put in from the sand. Just put chip shot. Chip. Go in. That's it. That should be it. And then, okay, 17 years ago. Take a look at this. This is the iconic shot. So it's off to the side, right? Now, hang on. Hit Just so we're clear, it's a putt, right? But it's a crazy fucking bizarre putt that he had to hit. Okay? So look where he hits it, up there, and it rolls down. Now, mind you, Nike had just paid him a gazillion dollars, right? But look at this. Stops right there. Nike, Nike, Nike. That is that not yeah. fucking insane? Yeah, that was gorgeous. If you're fucking marketing, and if you're you, you're a marketing, someone was crying. Someone's sure. fucking yeah. <laughs> so you yeah. don't play golf? You'd be you'd have a beautiful golf swing. Yeah, I mean, I've I've I, I used to always be the guy that would like I, I was camp counselor and shit. We we'd go up to the golf course and just get drunk and drive the carts around. And, do dumb things can i tell like, you that's where can i tell you when, like so i'll give you your five-year plan i'm gonna give you your five-year plan your 10-year plan and your 15-year plan all right this is my two cents you ready because mm -hmm. you ultimately you're going to be owning your own label you're going to be running stuff because i think you're too smart we do we do have a label oh you do start, yeah i just well, started just one one artist has been signed yeah yeah, yeah. But, sign a but, second but thank mississippi you. licking mississippi i'm gonna licking. put out a rap album i'm gonna all put right. out a rap album all right uh well, i need a good producer i'm gonna put out a rap album I got my second track I lost my sunglasses. It's just a it's a story about losing my sunglasses. Good. I can't find my sunglasses. Yeah, around the like house. I lost my wallet. And I lost yeah. my wallet. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, I fuck a milf. That's a good one. You can you can do a feature on that for That's me. It's a song. Yeah, I fuck okay. a milf. I, I fuck, fuck a milf. milf. Yep. I fuck a milf. Easy. And then sure, so these sure. are easy tracks that we could just hit out of the park. Uh, Speedos and Tito's. It's kind of like Speedos, and I like drinking Tito's. So is, is this the is this the These five, ten, and fifteen tracks. year plan? No, no, or is this is just it? My, no, this is me signing myself. <laughs> well, okay, your label. I was just want to make this sure is me that getting on your label. I wasn't sure if yeah. uh, we were. By the way, the good years. thing about me on your label, I don't need any money. Okay, so all I need is an album. <laughs> so you fair. don't have to sign me anything. Fair, okay. Yeah, yeah, all we need yeah. is studio yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my studio. Yeah, you a, have the studio. It's a couple okay. blocks away, man. Yeah, we start with Speedos and Tito's. That's the summer jam. Okay. Speedos and Tito's. We'll do it, it out now. For, yeah, Speedos and Tito's. Are you rapping or singing, or are you just or what? I'm gonna I'm gonna rap probably, but it's a mixture of rap singing. It's like uh, yeah. it'll. It's I think it's so much so much of a hybrid. I think it'll confuse a lot of people. All right, let's do That's it. That's why your features are gonna be really important. Would you, would you actually come over in the next week and record? Yeah. Okay. A hundred percent. Be sick. hundred percent. Love that. Okay. Uh, uh, amen. And, no, but I think I think I think in your 15 year plan, golf's in it golf is in i it. think golf is in it well all of my fucking Dude, rich too... friends everyone that i know that's rich gets starts golfing like whether they're in corporate i have a friend who's like high up at at and i have a friend who's really high up at uh goldman sachs and all them they start golfing but also my music friends like the the producers everyone. that start killing it they start golfing and it's Dude. like is it it's 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 a bro bonding thing right it's not like it's just is the, the sport's not that fun you it's fun as fuck it's fun as fucking shit. Hold on. I mean, I have had fun doing it because I go and I have one club and I love smacking the ball and getting drunk and driving the cart around. But like, I'm texting Brooks Kepka right now. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh we could all go golfing. Yeah. Facetime his ass, Howard. I Facetimed him the other day. I, right, I Facetime right. him too much. Tyson. But your golf is your future. You, you're, right. you're too. You're too tall, and you're gonna. You're you're too perfect for the fucking sport. I can definitely do the first thing the best. Driving. The driving. I can yeah. do that pretty all right. Every time every time I try it, I'll like miss the ball once and everyone's like, oh shit, that was trash. And then I'll hit it perfect and they'll be like, holy fuck, how did you just do that? And then the ball gets near the hole 
yeah. and everything goes to shit. I, I can't, my dexterity, I my little. Putt. I'm not, I'm a horrible putter. Yeah. Who gives a fuck about putting? All right. The we'll thing, go. what you just said, the thing they do first, the best, that's all anyone gives a fuck about. Do you yeah. think anyone sits around in the fairway to watch everyone's approach shot? Do you think anyone's talking about approach shots? Yeah. yeah. You should have seen my approach shot on four. Fuck that. You drive and you sink long putts. That's all anyone gives a fuck about is a beautiful drive and a draining a long. Do you think anyone a tap in that tiger putt was a bizarre long putt? They'll talk about it forever. Who get, you know how I many you can miss a million of those? Yeah, you sink one yeah. and everyone talks Thanks. forever. I'm trying to think of a, trying to think of like a good sport that we could like pop off that we could have all the homies do like pick up games disc golf. And- do you disc, like disc golf? golf i haven't done it but i have friends that are really into disc it disc golf i, I was gonna say I like hockey but yeah that's a lot of equipment it's a lot of work um which wouldn't be hard for us to what, get. what do you do to decompress and Jer- pete jerk off jerking um, off's great jerking off is dope i wonder if um, you could do a league for that a jerk off league yeah, yeah like if you could man. like set up a jerk off league where you like get your like almost like a fantasy football league where you're like uh all right well i'm like, taking a little more now too where you like could like reach out to your friends and you set up like a chat thread, you know, or like a like a like almost like on AT and T website. Go a Discord video chat. Everyone watch the same video. Like, you know, everyone had to jerk off to the same thing every week, right? And yeah. you timed it. Okay. Okay. Like, okay. how would you set up a disc golf? Oh no, no, or a jerk off uh, fantasy football dick, league. Dick golf. We call it dick golf. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantasy football. Fantasy jerk off. Fantasy jerk off, you have to pick the same porn star. Yeah, I don't know. Better yet, better yet. Hold on. We're coming up with something right yeah, now. And you're yeah. gonna you're about to love what I'm I'm coming up with. Okay. Right. Keep, keep keep going. So cheers. So cheers, buddy. Yeah, it's bye. good hanging out with you. Likewise. Um fantasy jerk off. Mm-hmm. We get popular porn stars, only fan stars. Oh, we're talking in person. We're talking real no, 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 no. Okay. We're talking just we, like just we could like, all have a booth and we could have a porn star doing like no, no no okay, no no okay, no okay, i think okay. well I'm, I'm soft pitching i'm soft pitching mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm and i don't mean to say no to a great idea you might okay. be you might be on a great idea fantasy jerk off so say the four of us are in a league right and with like six more dudes we each recruit porn stars meaning like just like you draft a team mm-hmm. you recruit porn stars and then throughout the season, you have to jerk off to them. But these porn stars are also in conjunction. So your fantasy football, everyone puts in $100, but well, that money goes to these porn stars. And then they're a part of your league also. So it's almost a way to like incorporate OnlyFans and fantasy so football. So it's like the girls are, are getting... The girls are getting the money, mm-hmm. but you're getting to jerk off to them. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so then they do like private videos for you, for your league. For my league. And are we racing to the nut? or are we, I think are we... it's got to be, right? I would think so. It's got to be like who can jerk off first. You're like so, high, so, you like, so, do like highest yield too. You know. So hold on. Like, I, okay, okay, hold on. Ready? This is gonna get really gay for a second. All right, cool. So I love that. So okay, so we're all in here. Ready? Everyone's on in this fantasy jerk off league. Yeah. So the four of us. Yeah. Each week we did we pick a different porn star. Our first week, let's just go with Lisa Ann. We're just we're all familiar with her. We're, we're, oh, so we all have the same team. So, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. So okay. we we draft as a league. Your goal is to achieve nuts the fastest you can okay. throughout the whole season. Okay. Okay. So, so so ultimately it's a timed event. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's built on trust because you only can trust the people you trust. And if you don't, no liars in this. Mm-hmm. So the f- first week's Lisa Ann, next week's uh, Adriana Chechik, next week is, is uh, is oh, this is going to be good. I'm about to come up on a really good idea. Hold on. Okay. I, I think that we each need to have our own team. Nope. No? Well, hear okay. me out. Hear okay. me okay. out. Okay. I'm hearing you out. Okay. I'll stop. The beginning of first, uh, game's always at Sunday at 10, p- 10 a.m. Sunday at 10 a.m. We're all jerking off at the exact same time, Sunday at 10 a.m. We all get sent a video from Lisa Ann. This, we all get the same video, but we've all put stuff in. We've all sent stuff to Lisa Ann to mention that we think that would turn off our friends so they can't come. So Lisa Ann does a curated video of her masturbating or playing with her tits or whatever. And They're and adding in and, and, and saying stuff like, I really hope they storm the tra- capital this month and then one of your buddies like a fucking all right he's like god damn it why'd you have to say that and now he can't come right but you're like i love when they storm the capital and so 
Does this make sense? So like, so like this is a, so it's a group team. Maybe you only do it with like five dudes, right? It's like a thousand dollar buy-in. The money goes to the porn stars, but they do curated videos that you guys each chime in to help each other. I'll not do it. Come. I'll do it. I'll do it. One hundred percent. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, 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 yeah. Like, oh, yeah. She's like talking. Yeah. Oh wait, 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 wait. Yeah, you're trying to jerk off, and they're just like, they're like, "How's your dog's leg doing?" You're like, "Oh fuck." Come on, dude, get this up the sexy. And but like it's each it's and so they take the things we send into them. I'm just it's spitballing here. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm actually no not, bad. Not, no idea is a bad idea. Yeah, it's a decent idea. It seems like it might be between us. But, it's got to be really close friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we had to get Theo involved. I know he's horny. Maybe Trevor. Uh, Theo's yeah. not as horny as you think. Really? <laughs> yeah. You should have seen him on my show, man. He's backstage with talking to like four different girls oh for real it's been game i went out i went out with a few, <laughs> i went out with i know this dude theo a few way times. too well i know theo way too well to hear him spit game dude he I, definitely has some game we actually we went to your fucking theo i love you so much bullshit theo's game is uh theo's game's like i'm working on myself <laughs> whatever it was it seemed he's, like it was working i guess I, I never heard it one-on-one -on -one, yeah but uh the dude felt like he had game i mean i my friends who had never met him were like, yo, this is dude with a mullet. That was like spin game in your He's the best, yeah, man. He's yeah, the yeah. best. He's the sweetest guy in the world. He brought me to your roast. Oh, for real? I was at your roast and we pull up late, of course. Yeah. And we we're way, way over in like like if you where you were sitting, we were way to your left. We got sat right next to Miranda Cosgrove, iCarly. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like iCarly, me, fucking Theo Vaughn, and a couple other goons. And we 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 did we could we couldn't hear shit but we were there yeah you were getting, no yeah you were like in the chair shirtless doing your thing fucking drunk as fuck yeah yeah theo's game is so sensitive like I i've, see I've seen him i've seen I've, i know theo way too well i th i know theo, theo way too well theo's game is like is like uh is like oh cool cool how, how are you sleeping <laughs> like Cute. he's just a nice guy he's like a fucking sweetheart like, yeah so like his uh it's funny that you hear because you know I'll say, I'll, I'll, he could have been saying those exact words to those that's ladies. Exactly, but, that's exactly. That's exactly who he is. It, it, appear, it appeared to be working. He's a very thoughtful, yeah. sensitive dude. Like he's a very sensitive. Girls dude. love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. But his game is genuine. You know. What, you know. And also, I'm saying this for Theo, and I mean this out of respect. I guarantee you, didn't bring one of those chicks home. He got their numbers, texted with them, and took them to lunch on Sunday. Yeah, like he is not. Right. He's not mm -hmm. like that. He's uh I think he once told me a, a story about a night that he hooked up with a girl for the first time and he was like ashamed. It's like that's very cute, you know. I would love to share more stories about Theo because he is that we should all go get dinner or something. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And Theo's Bob Bobby too. I recently met Bobby. Bobby Lee? Yeah. He's a fucking awesome. He's a wild card. Love that dude. He brought me out to dinner with David Cho. You know David Cho? Fuck yeah. I and David I Cho. didn't know him well, but I'm like Oh, David Cho's I like your kind of guy. Like idolize David Cho. David Cho's oh, your kind of guy. He got along so well. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. you're David Cho kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Like fucking just a brilliant dude. Does his own fucking thing. Yeah, sees the world's own fucking way. We had a great time. And then and time. then got all the shit and was like trying to like figure out how to make it normal. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're a David Cho guy. He's a bad. Yeah, we should go to him. dinner. Me, you, Bobby, and Theo, and then yeah. have them watch us drink. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're both sober, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, Theo's yeah. very yeah, sober. Yeah. He was very, very sober. Very, very sober. I think David. David Cho, probably, I, I don't know David Cho. I think, yeah, yeah. I know David Cho only through Rogan, and it's only through podcasts and stuff. But uh, Dude is badass. Cool. Yeah, he's fucking, you know his deal fucking. With Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. So sick. Give me one of those. Legendary. Yeah. Let's... If you get, if you, got, if you, if you, I don't know how much money you have. I'm saying this number because I think it's ridiculous. But if you got like $100 million tomorrow, and I don't know how much money you have, but like you. You would think that I had a hundred million dollars. I don't know how much money you have. How much do you think rappers make? I don't know. I think you're. I know. I know my. I know how much money I have. So and I'm assuming it's more than me. Mm. Mm, you've been around for a bit. You've been. You've been racking it up. I've had a few. I've had a few successful years. Yeah. But like, uh, I'm, I'm. I would say for me, it's it's double digits on the mills. Yeah. Not triple. Absolutely okay. not. All right. Lo yeah. Very low double digits. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so good then, for a rapper, but so, that's because so, I'm I'm an investor as well. I would say a hundred million dollars is like if someone gave me a hundred million dollar deal, 
And it was so crazy is at one point, Tom and I got offered a $100 million deal. <laughs> this is a hardcore secret time. But you can keep it in the show. But we, Tom, Sugar and I got offered a $100 million deal. It was a little more complicated than that. For like how many years? It was, it was, it was, it was very complicated. It was very okay. complicated. Okay. But we got offered a $100 million deal. And uh, I remember I was at a bar. Pete, do you remember where we were? I don't remember where we were. I remember that bar. Yeah, we were at a bar, and it was, like, crazy. It ended up not going through, but I was like, so then what do I do? I do. I, I work out the deal, but I'm done. I'm done. I don't need I – don't, I don't know if I need – I don't know creatively. I would I, – I would, what I'd do is I wouldn't hang it up because I want to work, but I would hang it up until the passion showed up again, you know? Like I'd, 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 does that make sense? Wait, so after the hundred million dollar deal, you'd hang it up. At the hundred million dollar deal, I'd, I'd do the work. But I would assume to... that the hundred million dollar deal would mean that you have to keep working for ten years. It was, no? it was not. It was a. It was a pretty, was pretty fucking. If the person that's listening that offered us that hundred million dollar deal is still interested, we're very interested still. We we didn't we didn't turn it we didn't turn it down for the record. It just okay. it just went away. Okay, got it. It just got it, got it got kind it. of just fucking went onto a back burner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But got uh, it, got it, got it, got it. but there was a moment where me and my best check, friend you should check on that burner if you haven't. It, that's not how Hollywood works. You gotta let them. You gotta let them come back. Fair, fair. They they need to want it. Yeah, it's like fair. pussy. Yes, they gotta want it. Yeah, if you want the pussy too much, it, it's aggressive. And it looks rapey, but if you if they if the pussy wants you, then all of a sudden, I'm really blessed to be in a place in my life right now, and like for the last couple of years with my brand, where like I just don't even have to think about that. It's like what pussy or money? <laughs> no, the, the 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 pussy wanting me versus blah blah blah. It's like oh, yeah. just you know they got a horny DM from yeah. someone famous. But like, all right, bet let's go. Oh, with sex. The sex is it's very smooth. At but with brands, are there brands that you'd want to work with? Like, cause that's the way I look at it. Like, are there brands that you go, God, man, why didn't Pop Tarts fucking with me? Wasn't well, Pop? That's why I, I want to finish off on that that last statement about the the pussy. It sounded a little bit douchey. It's more like it's more like I am surprisingly blessed to currently be in that place, and that will not last for life. And I need bro. To there's never been a drought of pussy in your life. Well, you're six seven. You've got beautiful hair. i had an acne you look like chris and hemsworth i had acne and short hair and i was like skinny and all that. anyways pull up I'm just young, saying, young gravy <laughs> i'm just saying when i get pull older young, yeah young pull up gravy. Young, young gravy see if you can find it but i'm just saying when i was young when i'm or when i'm older i know that i'm gonna like there hey okay well that's a bad example oh I you're look, a kidnappable Every, I guarantee you there's a room full of women downstairs going oh i'm kidnappable you're adorable dude Thank you. Okay, that's, are you fucking serious? You're well, with two chicks. Well, yeah. I mean, this is this is all, and this, this is this is the this is the look at you're such a sweet kid. You're like, hey guys, you guys want to do a picture? Yeah, it's a little weenie boy. Wait, keep going, it, keep going. If you have other, let's options, go over your yeah. oh your all your haircuts. I like your oh oh oh, oh oh my god. Hey, uh, the one right below the current photo that's I, I have a red hat on. The green, oh yeah, that one. That is one of the coolest pictures I've ever taken in my life. What I had the that? Elmo hat on three girls dude i was like seventh grade that was that was air apostle shirt that was this is the definition but you era. always got chicks i hate to break your heart it's the definition of an era i did young bert kreischer and you're gonna <laughs> see what unfuckable I, looks like i guess it's more like i had chicks growing up a little bit but i just feel like i'm gonna fall off that that's my point i don't think you're gonna find a young picture of me Oh, that's well, I, well, whatever that You're is. Pretty hot, dude. I could, that's when I met my wife. Pro and I probably wouldn't fight you. Look at that yeah, guy. Double chin. That one's a little bit harsh, but I'm I mean, the rest the right, are pretty good. Yeah, we can get out of these. I, I don't think these are going to cheer me up. <laughs> you get it? Yeah, swing, swing out of these right now. Wait, I don't wait, need wait, okay, well, why do they have Lizzo next to you? Is there? Is there a? Is that Aaron Rodgers? The, the white. Wait, where's, oh, you called yourself the white Lizzo? I think someone called me the White Lizzo. Bro, I, I should call himself the White Lizzo. Well, what, Lizzo's hot. I love her. Uh, have you seen her dancer? Her dancers. Mm -mm. Her live show is fucking legit. I think Lizzo. I think there's something super sexy about Lizzo. Uh, I, my friend. I also think she's sexy. What's that? I also think that she's sexy. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know. Cool. It's the confidence. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. What were we talking about? You getting pussy? Oh, you know, we're talking brand about deals, brand deals, brand deals. Oh, brand deals. Obviously, I'm down with brand deals. Yeah, pop tarts. 
Well, Pop Tarts would be cool, but yeah, I mean, like I I ended up getting re- reached out to by Jimmy John's and Pizza Hut and Dr Pepper, which are all very like staples of my life. So God. that was great. Uh, what else have we what done? We did Rolex? Samsung. We did uh, Four Loco. The Four Loco ad that I did is hilarious. You Owner, Four Loco ad. Yeah, and it was, but they let me go full creative on it. See if you can. Uh, find I imagine. I, I'm assuming the board at Four Loco uh, <laughs> would be like, would be like, oh, we'll green light it. Oh, sure. Man, it might have only been on my shit. Look, try looking up for. No, that looks like a diss track by someone in my photo. Look up um, Tony Zamboni. I I might have to find it. I think I deleted it. Uh, I'll find it for you. I'll just show you. I'll show you later. Show you later. But but yeah. they let me do full creative on this four logo ad, and it was great. I'd imagine the uh, creative team of four logo is pretty liberal. They're very chill. Yeah, they're, they're like they're like, yeah, man, we're four logo. Yeah, what do you want to do? They're with the shits. Yep. Do you guys do an anal? Sure. Yeah, yeah. it's four loco. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. our brand. <laughs> I've never had four loco in my life. You never I, had it. It's I, not. It, it's not good at all. So you're fine for real. Yeah, has anyone ever told you that it was good? Mm, no. Fair enough. <laughs> facts recently we did a trip out to the middle of alberta right by banff we rode horses out there this was like a week ago for a music video my friend and i baby no money shout out to baby no money we, dro- we got an album dropped next month we rode horses out four hours from civilization uh driving and then rode the horses four hours deeper yeah. and we're we're sleeping in the middle of nowhere I'm like oh, how and great it, is that? it brought back my whole like sort of you know camp counselor nature childhood you forget how much that means to you and it was beautiful i was so happy the whole time i had no phone service for 24 hours and i was just like man it was fucking awesome it's the best when you get when like we did a thing we ran buffalo across texas and and on horseback and (laughs) we sounds amazing it was fucking awesome and you get out no cell service you get out at the end of the night we've done riding they set up camp and then someone's like, what do you want to do? And someone's like, let's shoot guns. And we're like, huh? And they just set up targets and we just shot guns. We're doing quick draw. And, we, and it's just cowboy shit. Texas and, is and, sick. And it was like, pull up, pull up Burt Kreischer shooting guns in Texas. Or Burt Kreischer, Texas, horseback. And we just fucking sat out there. We had a film crew with us. So, like, we're shooting it, obviously. The, 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 then go to the next one. Go to the next one. Go to the next one. This is us shooting guns. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, now I need you to go to YouTube. I and how skinny I was. Hey, you're a bad bitch. Uh, we need Young Gravy Knockout. So this is one of the first music videos I shot. We went and stayed with some rich people in, yep, that first one. Well, I'm curious, what's the, tr- like, I, I'll keep the headsets on. Yeah, I kind of like this. But, like, what's the what's the transformation from this guy to this guy? Like, where where is, like, because it's a, it seems like a natural transformation, but, like, this guy's so young. Yeah. How how long ago was that? I want to say four years, maybe three, four years. Okay. Yeah. So um, the guy's so young. Like he's like you can see the innocence in you. Like uh, the the yeah. shock that you're there. Yeah. 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 That was me, pretty close out of college on my first tour, figuring out what all the shit was about. And every music video that we're shooting is just yo. We have a camera. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's film whatever the fuck we're doing. And we get friends that happen to own guns and animals. Like, all right, let's do something fun. So a lot has changed where it's like now a lot, just high expectations. I've done very high budget music videos and my music. I mean, I would say the music video side of things hasn't changed that much because I still love to do a running gun video like this. Some yeah. of like my best videos are low budget. But music wise, I've definitely evolved a lot. Where what's that this, song, what's this one you're they're about to play. Huh. Oh, 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 yeah. you, oh, oh, you found it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Basically, I, I got better at music, music videos. I still love to do random bullshit. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. This, this was the ad I was talking about. This is Tony Zamboni. I know you remember me. I just teamed up with the best beverage company in the world. I'm talking about Four Loco, baby. You know what it is. And man, if we got something for y'all. 
Shooter want to be sponsored by Four Loco, baby. We're looking for people to sponsor, man. We are looking for winners. All we need is y'all to send some videos in to at Four Loco. Do something dope. I mean, I know some of y'all play water polo. At Four Loco, DM us, all right? Oh, man, she hitting that. She, she can get a sponsorship, and he can get a sponsorship, baby. Uh, he hit that. Hey, that's checkmate, baby. He getting a sponsorship. Sponsored, 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 sponsored. All I want to see is something dope. Hit some top cheddar if you're on the ice, you know what I'm saying? At Four Loco, DM us, all right. That's easy. 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 So that was like, you know, I mean, I was kind of inspired by the, you know, like Tim and Eric type type style, but uh you ever follow was, you ever follow Eric Warheim's? I think that was one of the biggest ever for local ads to ever like pop off. It really worked really worked real well. I mean, were you a Tim and Eric guy? Uh, I've, I've watched a decent amount of it. Yeah. Do but. have you do you follow Eric? I'm saying his name. Hopefully, I'm. First of all, Tim Heidecker's a motherfucker. He makes me giggle hard as fuck. They're both hilarious. Eric Warheim, another motherfucker, makes me giggle. But his food shit, have you followed his food shit? Mm-mm. This buddy, food shit? Buddy, he is the best in the food game there is. He's the best in the food game. P please pull up Eric Warheim's. Eric's uh, the taller guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's a, it, by the way, Tim, Tim Heidecker's got leading man looks. Tim Heidecker is a good looking dude. He's gotten better looking. Him and his dad. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Tell us. Can someone downstairs get Tim and Eric on something's burning? Because Tim, you ever you ever see a celebrity uh who works their way into your heart by something very normal in their life? So Tim uh uh Tim Heidecker was in Sarasota with his father, uh, and he was doing a drink where it's Campari inside a, I forget what it's called. It's called like a fried egg or something. Campari inside a, a beer. And they were drinking at like 10 in the morning. <laughs> and I went, all right, I'm their guy forever. So Eric Warheim's fucking food on his Instagram, go to his Instagram, is fucking next level. He just made a pasta sauce that made me want to jerk off. Go down. Uh, see, I, He just posted it recently. Is that can that's it that's it that's it is uh, that's gotta be it. Or is he, he just makes so he does pop-up so. restaurants where he does subs i think he's from philly and so he does subs he just did a pop-up restaurant the other day that i wanted to go to but i was out of town but like he's legit obsessed with food look at this pasta sauce you let me know next time uh by the way yeah a hundred percent we're neighbors so there's a there's a lot of things we're neighbors so there's yeah. a lot of things we should be doing we should be doing together yeah In like this. like like uh look at this no like jerking off um, our jerk off game should be on yep. to, on point god look eric warheim is legit into the food game the, those two Let's are go. like i it. love diverse talent they're funny mm -hmm. as fuck they're great actors are great screenwriters are great comedians but man i love when you find someone's passion and you're like fuck i'm into food look at yeah. this look at this go to that that pizza lower 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 wrong one that's not a pizza have you been to the new tie spot yet Look at that. Look at that. You've been you've been to the tie spot yet? No. Near here? Uh on a Jacques? No. Let's go. All right, done. Uh Bobby Hundreds from the Hundreds told me he's got a plug. They can get us a good table. I am sure we could just call ahead and get a table. Done. But it's it's a new, it's a restaurant within ten minutes of here that it's supposed supposedly one of the best. I think it got rated number one in LA. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I'm in. I'm Someone fucking else, I'm definitely in. in. I'm mentor. We gotta exchange numbers. Mm hmm Wait so wait, what was I talking to uh you were saying Tim and Eric? Oh, well, Tim and Eric came up because I was talking about the four local ad. Oh, we were just talking about. Uh, I love drunk podcasts. Yeah, yeah. The best. Where it's like, hey, let's. let's, let's Where you meander. Let's kind of. a conversation. Try to re rewind and not successfully. Well, we talked about brand deals and I. That's Mac. Oh, that's your dog. I was like, man. So we talked about brand deals and four local. Do you have a dog? And Tim and Eric. Uh, I don't have a dog. I grew if up you, with a dog. If you get a dog, what kind of dog would you get? That's a really good question, man. Yeah, I, I'm really into dogs. Probably a German Shepherd. Really? Or a Swiss Shepherd. You ever seen a Swiss Shepherd? No, pull up Swiss Shepherd. And by the way, also pull up Doggo Argentino, the baddest motherfucking dog in town. Yeah. That's dog a Swiss Shepherd. It's, it's a German. Then you're going to love Doggo Argentinos. Okay. You're okay. going to love Doggo Argentinos. It's an, it's an all white German Shepherd, and God Shania it, Twain has one, and I've always thought they were legendary. Yeah. How did you meet Shania Twain's husband? Uh well I met Shania Twain. Wait, isn't he like a famous mu music producer? Um, that's her ex-husband, and oh. they they did a swap. Yeah, like a 
two couples that no way yeah kind of crazy story that's dog look at that fucking dog dog argentina oh the dogs that look like that i don't know that they, fucking... they always lick me and dro- drool on me and stuff like they're cute oh i don't, I don't mind it that's i just fucking... i would love for my friend to have that dog but i i think if it was mine i want like <laughs> I either want a border collie or like a shepherd. Really? Yeah. I love like a, a nice, like fluffy one that doesn't smell bad. So wait, how did you meet Shania Twain? Shania Twain, I met, it was a Grammy party and I had no idea who she was. I think this is why we're friends. Because I had no idea who she was. I obviously knew the fucking name, but I didn't know a song by her. And I walked up and I was like, I, I looked at her. I was like, that's a milf. Uh, I started like trying to like hit on her and be nice. And we started talking and then we just got along really, really well. I th- I think that's the fact that I wasn't fanboying at all, and everyone was like, "Look!" I remember everyone started looking at us, and I was like, "What's what's going on here?" Yeah. I was like, "It's just some pretty lady that I met," but everyone's staring at us, and I was like, "All right, so she's something. She's something going on." I was like, "So what's your name?" She's like, "Shania," and you're like, "I only know a couple of those." And I, I was like, oh, no, I was just completely honest. I was like, yo, like, I, I, I grew up somewhere where we don't listen to a lot of country, and, and I know your name and you're a legend, but I haven't heard much of your music. And she was like, I love that. She's like, I, I, I think one of her sons knew <laughs> one of her sons knew one of my songs or something. I don't know, but it was like we didn't have much knowledge about each other, but we got along really well. And then it just so happened that her husband was there, who is from Switzerland, and I'm – a Swiss citizen. Yeah. My dad was my dad was born there. I we talked about parts of Switzerland that I like. I used to spend a lot of time in. So oh wow. So we had that bonding experience and everything. And and since then I've been to her shows, barbecues, stuff like that. We're, we're close. So you go to Switzerland. Do you bring an assistant? Do you bring a manager? Or do you just go by yourself? Well, I've only ever been there when my dad was still around and when my mom and I were like traveling. When I was like in high school, I would go and just visit my family i have like two family members still around there that are like late 90s oh wow um so i want to go later this summer and and see them but when you travel do you travel by yourself uh not usually but i think i will for this oh really because i want to go see family and i want to go see should i like it would be kind of weird to bring somebody yeah obviously anywhere i travel i usually bring like either like you know some type of management tour management something because i'm traveling Security, if I really need to, I don't really need to because I'm fucking six foot eight and can fight. Uh, if I need to, it's. In- I need one more drink on that, Pete. <laughs> I'm six foot eight and I can fight. All right, it, let's, I'm gonna Minnesota. run through. I want to run through a list of. I'm gonna let you get out of here. We've been on here for two and a half hours almost. Well, it's been great. Uh, but like, I want to run through a couple people, not talk shit, but so so we can edit anything out that you don't want to say. But there's a couple people I'm curious about in the hip hop game. That are like, in in any name you don't you you don't like the way you're comfortable the way you represented it. We'll just edit out their name entirely, so you'll never hear it. Okay. Okay. So like, yeah. uh, I'm curious. So, so it's a question of whether like, I could win in a fight. No, no, or no, just... no. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> That's so much better. Okay. All right. No. <laughs> all right. All right. So he's gonna name rappers. I'm gonna say whether I think I could win the fight. No, that, that's not what I wanted, but that's so much better. We'll, we'll, we'll make it two things. No, okay, okay. Whether, whether I like them yeah, well, do you like and their... whether I would like to fight okay. them. All right. Do you, do you like them? Are they legit? So people I go. We're going to start with the fight part and then we'll go to the do I like them. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Lil Dicky. Lil Dicky, I could win the fight. Easy. 3,000%. <laughs> and I do like really like his music. I he's think, really good, I think right? he's really talented. And I haven't seen the show. The only reason I haven't is because I very rarely watch TV. And when I do watch TV, it's because I want to escape from my life. So I watch weird shit. And I heard that the show is just very similar to my life. But I heard it's fucking amazing. Well, I bet it is similar shout to, to little yeah. Shout out to Lil Dicky. I think he's very talented, but I could probably win the fight. Yeah, uh, yeah you, I think. I, think I mean, I mean, I mean it's, it's just genetically, I'm just like kind of, yeah. When yeah. Lil Dicky was on The Breakfast Club and they asked about his dick and he said, it's very small. Good for him, my favorite, man. It was my favorite moment I've ever had in anything where I went, I fucking love this kid. I, dude, I yeah, he seems and like he's a, a very talented. He seems rapper. like a genius. He's also really good rapper. He's a really good Maybe rapper. A little bit more. And, and then, and, okay, so Lil Dick, you could beat him up, and he's a good rapper. Yeah, I love his music, and I could beat him up. Yep. Okay, um, this is going to be interesting. I like the beat him up part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of this. Um, Riff Raff. Riff Raff. <laughs> it's funny Oof. because I actually was pitched at one point. You know how they do like the celebrity fights? Yeah. Uh, you know people wanted me to fight riffraff and i was scared 
I was scared. His and they they tried to pitch his brother as my trainer. So his brother, who looks just like him, he's he's a friend of mine. He's a great guy. His name yeah. is Victor. He's a pro snowboarder. Um, he, they wanted me and Victor to train for months in order for me to fight Riff Raff. Um, I don't know. Riff Raff, I think is i wouldn't want to fight him he just he just has like a sort of energy where i'm like i don't know if the crack like oh, i'm not saying he does crack but i'm just saying he has like a crackhead like energy about it's, him it's called that lanky guy yeah. lanky guys there's like lanky guys you never want to fight but have you i mean i'm lanky but, but you're that's why i never want to fight you okay well thank you but but have you seen him when he was off the, the roids uh, when he was on the roids i saw him on roids uh, yeah yeah <laughs> sorry on the roids yeah, when, 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 when he got the roids. jacked yeah yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I feel like he would have I think, yeah, I wouldn't want to fight Riff Raff. But there's something, there's something about Riff Raff that I, and Jody High Roller, that I will yes. say that I, that, uh, that rubs me sideways where I realize, I mean this respectfully, Jody High Roller, uh, but, uh, the Pink Panther, but, uh, that he had a rougher childhood than he's letting on. That I think there was, I think he's always been who he was, and I don't think it was accepted by his community. And so I think there's a part of him that doesn't mind getting scrappy as fuck. I think that he checks mind out. Biting your ear. I think that checks out. But I think that I wouldn't doubt that his whole life he's been like shit talked to, and the fact that he powered through that and stayed himself yeah. and fucking made like one of the best freestyles of all time. Have you seen his sway freestyle? No, pull one up, of the pull one of the best right freestyles now. that I've ever heard in my life. One of the most beautiful freestyles. And he made some of the most unique music out there. And it, don't, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you make a song that catches everyone's fucking attention, like yeah. Dolce & Gabbana, I think Riff Raff's a fucking legend, and he definitely inspired my I gotta hear career. this. I got to hear this freestyle. It's long, but yeah. you want Is it to long? It? Well, I got a piece, so you listen. Go pee. You know no one does that. You know no one does that, right? No one does that. That's a freestyle. Yeah. That's a real freestyle. I can guarantee it's a real freestyle. That's a real freestyle. I can guarantee it's an actual freestyle and it's it's no one can pull that off. That's a real fucking freestyle. Yeah, yeah. Literally like going off the dome. It's amazing. That's a real fucking freestyle. Yeah. You liked it? Uh, it was fucking great. So I've been a i I've been a riffraff fan for a long time. I had him on the podcast. Uh I we did, I did a cooking show with him and Bradley Martin. Uh, but that's a real freestyle. And this is like skinny riffraff. Dude, I, I miss skinny riffraff. Not not that I don't like current one. I think I think I'll tell you, I'll give you, I'll give you notes on Riff Raff. I mean, candidly, he's, I think he's so, I think he's gotten blown up so big that he's a little protective of himself. He's not the, he's not as fun as the old Riff Raff. Like, I think he's trying, I think, I think it's what you're dealing with of like, he's gotten so big and pe so many people know who he is. He's a little protective of himself. Because mm -hmm. when we mm -hmm. did the podcast, you could tell that he was a little shut down and he would, he didn't know how to like, he was like, I've represented myself so honestly. I'm not comfortable with it anymore, in my opinion. But man, that freestyle. Amazing, right? That's fucking amazing. Yeah, that's a real right. freestyle. For real. Absolutely. No one does Guaranteed. that. 100%. Question, do you, are you associated with Simon Rex? Yeah. Dirt Nasty. Yeah. You guys are friends? Yeah. Because he was one of the first people ever to like take me in and like be a mentor for me here in LA. Like four or five years ago, when I just came out here and needed a place to stay for like label meetings and stuff, Simon Rex and I got in touch and he let me stay at his place in Santa Monica for like weeks or months at a time. Either he'd be gone or we'd both be there, but like him and I got really close. Simon, so I'm old school Simon Rex fan. I'm a MTV VJ Simon Rex fan. When he interviewed Tupac and shit. Yeah. Uh, so ridiculous. that's, and, and when I first moved to New York, there's a guy named Jordan Rubin, one of the best. Can I tell you, for real, right now, he should direct your next music video. Jordan Rubin is legit. legit. Jordan Rubin. Jordan okay. Rubin. Ask Simon Rex about Jordan Rubin. Jordan Rubin is the shit. He's, first of all, he's just the artsiest fucking guy that you'll ever meet. I want you to do, I'm going to do, can I do, pull up Jordan Rubin's Instagram. This is who Jordan Rubin is, right? Jordan Rubin's just a regular comic. He's just a comic. Mm. His uh grew up in New York City. Uh Jordan Rubin is a comedian. Uh it's uh good his Instagram. He is a regular fucking person. Like he's not like he doesn't flex. He's just a regular 
brilliant, brilliant comedian. But look at him at the Dead and Company. Scroll down, scroll down. There's a picture of him in Dead and Company the other day. Oh, maybe I missed it. I don't know. This might be some fan account. Scroll up. That's Jordan Room in the middle. Oh, that's him with who are those guys? Actually, a little oh, that's him and John weird. Mayer and Dave Chappelle. So he's like he's legit one of the most talented dudes I've ever met in my life. He used to have a joke that killed me. He goes, you know, they wrote Starbucks or they wrote Starbucks. They were Star Wars on on marijuana. He goes, that kind of makes sense when you think about the pitches. He's like, all right, this next character, his name's Chewbacca. And they're like, wait, what's he saying? He's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, Jordan like, Rubin. I, yeah. I got to set you up with Jordan Rubin because he is someone that will Love do it. something fun with you that'll be like, but he's good friends with Simon Rex. So one day I'm walking down the street with Jordan Rubin in in uh, in New York City, and Simon Rex walks up. It's Simon Rex. He's a good looking dude, but fucking, fucking 1997. Hot. He's a stud. He's just hot, and yeah. he's on like Veronica Mars or some shit. It's funny because I remember like having a, like girls around me at, at that time that I would talk to a lot, and like I would they'd be like, "Yo, so where are you staying?" I'd be like, "Oh, I'm with I'm with uh, Simon Rex." And, like the girls would be like, "Oh shit!" I'm like, "Yo, yo, relax." He's he's, yeah, he's I want to hot motherfucker. Wonder if he'll answer my face. Oh, he won't answer. I have a new phone number. No one's answering my FaceTime. Want to FaceTime Simon Rex? Yeah, let's FaceTime Simon let's Rex. Let's do it. Are we, are we gonna do the thing again where we both try? At the same uh time? I'll see if I have him. I am all my numbers are out. Oh, I got Simon. I wonder what number I have. All right, I'm FaceTiming right now. What if I've gotten so fat he doesn't recognize me? <laughs> you look the same. Bro. You look are you okay. FaceTiming him? Yeah, I'm trying. I think you're a little bit ahead of me <laughs> motherfucker what's up daddy say he's dead to me he's dead to me he's fucking dead you're dead to me you're dead to me i'm with uh i'm with bert bro i'm with bert we wanted to... you're fucking dead to me i just facetimed you you motherfucker oh i got your, oh, old, number. Got your old number oh hey yeah hey can i can i tell him hey can i i'm talking to uh, we're talking right now about how great jordan rubin is Oh, he's the best. Dude. I don't know if Gravy knows him. I know. I was going to introduce him. Jordan should direct his next music video. Oh, for sure. That'd be great. Without a fucking doubt. Jordan's so fucking good. He's so talented. But, dude. I'd love to set it up. I could set up a meeting. We could do a meeting. Maybe just let me know what you want to do. Uh, are you guys already recorded or about to record? We're recording right now. We're yeah, drinking. Right now. Like two hours. Oh, we're we're, we're two and a half hours in. Uh, you know, I just I just left with Matt Vaughn. Um, we, we just did a movie together, Matty Vaughn. No wife. shit. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually pulling up to his crib right now. I'm in Venice. Um, oh, so happy for you, bro. It's so cool to see you killing it, dude. I, mean, I gotta say the same to you. You you pop up. up in my feed all the time about all the fucking cool shit you're doing. I fucking love you, brother. I love you. I love you too, man. Wow. What a guy, man. He's fucking great. He like I swear to God, he was the like. It's funny because I kind of idolized him when I was younger, and I was like, "This dude's badass." Oh, he's I heard awesome. 1980. I heard like 1980 was badass. Mickey yeah. Avalon was fucking badass. Yeah, All I love I love sick, Mickey dude. Avalon. I gotta be honest with you, Andy Milanakis fucking killed it too. All right, we should probably wrap this up. We still got it. We still, yes. we still have to do a cooking show. Who do you want to do the cooking show with? With what we're we talking about? We Maybe Snoop Dogg or T Pain. Snoop Dogg would be the Snoop best. Snoop Dogg or T Pain, or I mean, I'm out to S Snoop. Simon I'm, I'm, would be great. Simon would be great. I he's, would love to get linked with Snoop Dogg. Listen, yes. the whole fact, and I'm telling you this right now, you got to weigh in the Christ your heart because you you commented positively on my wife and you fucking, every woman down there is like, I fucking love this guy. I fucking love this guy. You, you've you made a way into our fucking family. Cheers, well, I'm, glad that, I'm glad that we got to meet in person. And Dude, and this has been a blast. It, this is the best way to do a podcast. Mm -hmm. You come in with a Jaguar full of tequila, <laughs> yeah, of and that's the way to do a fucking podcast. Yeah, man. I Dude, had to, bro. I can't wait. I can't wait to see the big things that happen for you. I can't wait to be attached to some of those things, and I can't oh, wait to please. fucking... I'm fucking excited, man. Thank it's you, a, man. This is a great fucking podcast. It has been a fucking pleasure, man. We really, I really appreciate it. Cheers. Yeah, man. Cheers, baby. Okay,